Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone to India's Got Chess Talent episode 3. Today we are going to be live with the team of Chess Patshala. And joining us and teaching us will be the founder of Chess Patshala and Grandmaster Swapnil Dhopade, who will be teaching today. And there will be eight players in his team who will try to learn from him and become better at chess and i'm very excited for this episode of india's got chess talent a warm welcome to everyone in the chat uh, and as i see today is the day when actually chess base india has now 7000 videos on our channel so maybe this one is the 7000th one so <laughs> very nice uh, to see that and Guys, before we get rolling, let me just give you a small intro of all those who do not know about India's Got Chess Talent as to what this program is all about. So, India's Got Chess Talent is uh, an initiative that was launched on 28th of January uh, and then over the next 8 months we, get, we had a lot of entries that flowed in for people who wanted to be a part of it. And from 700 plus entries, we narrowed down to 32 people who were divided into four teams of eight players each. And the mentors and the coaches of these four teams are Grandmaster Debashish Das, Grandmaster Shyam Sundar, GM Swapnil Dopade, and GM uh, Swayams Mishra. The teams are Team Debashish Das, Team Wings of Fire, Team Chess Patshala, and Team Delphinus, as you can see, each team has eight players of differing levels. And this is team Sham Sundar, Wings of Fire. Uh, this is the team uh, that we will have today. That is Chess Patshala. And this is the team of Swayam's team Delphinus that will be there tomorrow. And about the format. From 1st to 4th of September, we will have training sessions. So there was on 1st, it was Debashish Das's session. On 2nd, we had Shyam Sundar. Today on 3rd, we have Swapnil Dopade. And with each of the trainers, uh, will continue their work for the week. Like the students will keep on working. And towards the mid-September, we will have the semi-finals 1, semi-finals 2 and finals. And each game match will be of 8 games of 15 minutes plus 10 seconds increment. In case of 4-4 tie, we will have an Armageddon. And this is the prizes. These are the prizes. Each member of the winning team will receive a gift voucher of rupees 10,000 from Chess Base India to buy chess products, chess books, softwares and so on, which will boost their chess. And in addition, the winning coach will be able to decide the winner of India's Got Chess Talent Scholarship of Rs. 50,000. So he can decide to give it to a player in his team, from another team, to any player outside as well uh, that the coach can decide. So this is how things are. And before we get going, let's introduce the team. And before that, I would like to in invite the coach of the team. So let's do that without any further delay. Let's welcome the coach of Team Chess Patshala, the founder of Chess Patshala, one of the finest trainers in the country, the coach of the Indian women's team at the World Team Championship. At this Olympiad, he was the coach of India 2 team, which finished 8th. He has so many achievements as a trainer. He's the coach of Raunak Sadhwani, he has trained uh, Sankal Gupta, he has trained Harshit Raja, so many wonderful players in our country. So it gives me immense pleasure to welcome Swapnil Dhopade. Hello, Swapnil. Hello, Sagar. Hello, everyone. Swapnil, how are you and uh, how, how do you find this entire thing? India has got chess talent. Uh, as a yeah, This is an interesting initiative, Sagar. In fact, uh, when we discussed it uh, long back, I, I really welcome this initiative when you suggested me this, that, you know, this can also be uh, done through Chess India. So I was really excited at that time itself. It was like, I think, five to six months back, yes. I believe. And uh, I immediately said uh, that, yes, I would like to be connected to this initiative. So here we are. Finally. Yes, and here we are. And today we are going to 
train and today you are going to train eight players who are from differing levels but with one thing in common they all want to improve and before right. you arrived i was actually talking to them and i learned that everyone is very active and is going to play a lot of tournaments in the coming days so i think uh, whatever they will learn today and in the in this week is going to be very useful to them for their chess right right i in fact uh, when you sent me the email i checked the games of all the players mm. and i realized that everyone has different weaknesses like uh, few players lagged in tactics few players lagged in calculation few needed some opening preparation so there were different weaknesses and strengths uh, of all the players so i decided to pick a common topic uh, uh, today's topic is mastering weak pawns so i thought this topic uh, will be really beneficial for everyone and uh, it is not just uh, a short term training uh, thing that we are doing here uh, this topic of uh, uh, weak pawns is going to be helpful for them uh, for future tournaments and uh, for few, uh, for the upcoming years as well fantastic so i will be very excited to know actually i myself keep learning uh, new things from all these trainers so you know while uh, all the students do get benefited i am the biggest <laughs> beneficiary learning all the time so i'm very excited for it but before that swapnil let's meet the members of your team yeah okay so first uh, person to come on our screen this is the team that we have and the first one is pratibha pi she is from madurai tamil nadu she is 15 years old and she is unrated but in the past she has represented madurai in tamil nadu state championships so before we call her on the screen let's have uh, a short video of her and see what she has to say i am pa pratibha from madurai tamil nadu generally chess means to me as a lesson for my life and the india got chess talent is a great opportunity to showcase my talent thank you okay so we have pratibha here joining us and pratibha's uh, internet is slightly uh, low so i don't know if she can hear us well pratibha can you hear us yes sir i can okay fantastic and pratibha how excited are you to learn today from swapnil Sir, I am super excited. You are super excited. Yes, sir. Fantastic. And uh, Pratibha, uh, are you going to play some rating tournaments soon? Yes, sir. I got rating. You, you, you are, you got your rating. Yes, sir. So now you are got... rated. Yes, sir. One zero. One zero. Oh, sir. oh, fantastic. So in the last few months, you got your rating, and. Uh, Swapnil, she is the first participant in your team. Okay. Yes, yes, I have checked her profile as well as her games. Really? And uh, yeah. what do you have to say? Uh, she she is doing fine. I think she started like a few years back, I believe. Uh, but yeah, she needs to improve her uh, tactics, especially in time pressure, because I observed that there were a lot of tactical mistakes towards the end. Ah, very interesting swapnil because you have seen the games i'm going to ask you a bit about the players when they come on the screen so that's right. uh, so that they would also get some insights uh, so pratibha that was i think swapnil has seen your games and uh, maybe working on tactics is what is important for you okay uh, so i'll invite the second member on our screen and the next up we have is shubhi gupta she is from gaziabad uttar pradesh 12 years old fide rating of 1713 let's hear what shubhi has to say i am shubhi gupta from gaziabad uttar pradesh my current rating is 1682 according to me chess is a game of calmness harmony among the pieces energy of the players strength of the plan and sense of the counter plan according to me india's got chess talent is an opportunity for me to get new exposure and improving my skills okay. 
guys that was shubhi and let's welcome her on the screen and i would like to tell you that shubhi is the current national under 12 champion of india and one of the most promising youngsters who will go on to represent our country at the world cadets uh, that will be happening very soon so i think this is going to be a big big uh, session for you shubhi welcome hello sir how are you sir i am fine how are you i am very good and shubhi are you excited today to be learning from swapnil yes sir very excited yeah have you have you yes. learned from a gm before uh yes sir from swam sir in uh, national coaching camp oh in national coaching camp nice and swapnil what, what do you have to say about shubhi did you look at her games yeah i looked at her games as well and uh, what i observed is that she is playing some solid uh, openings from both sides uh, what i think is uh, the games that she uh, see uh, she sent me there were some losses and in those games which she lost i think uh, she made some calculation errors like uh, there were some deep tactical ideas for the opponent which she missed so i guess calculation is one area that she needs to work on especially looking for hidden ideas for the opponents okay okay very interesting and shubhi you can uh, later on ask swapnil as to how you can improve these things if you have any questions we will have time for that yes sir okay let's go to our next contestant here uh, who will be joining us now and that is amina nk from wayanad kerala and she is 9 years old she has a rating of 1015 let's hear first amina before we invite her on Hi. the screen my name is amina nk i am from wayanad district in kerala my current rating is 1015 According to me, chess is an interesting mind game, which increases mental strength, concentration, memory power, etc. India's Got Chess Talent is a program conducted by Chess Base India to promote India's young chess minds. Thank you and have a nice day. Okay, so that was Amina here. and let's have her on the screen and uh, speak with her hello amina hello sir how are you fine sir fine you are just 9 years old yes and sir what's your rating now 101 1015 okay and amina is going to play from next month so apnil she said she will play some tournaments uh are you excited amina to meet swapnil dhopade gm yes sir i am very excited yes and what do you want to learn from him <laughs> she wants to learn everything <laughs> sorry sir everything Ev oh everything <laughs> nice that is that's the attitude to have So Swapnil, you looked at her games. Uh, any thoughts? Uh, yeah, I looked at Amina's games as well. Uh, I think she is doing very good for her age, and uh, she is a talented kid. She can go quite ahead in chess. Uh, what I observed is that uh, I, she needs a lot of playing uh, experience, playing practice. I believe so. I think she has been playing a lot of online tournaments. But if she can travel to tournaments, uh, physical tournaments as well, it's going to really help her. And of course, at this age, uh, there are so many things that you can improve. Uh, each and every area of chess, uh, you can you know train and improve. So there are a lot of uh, things to improve for in our game. But uh, I think she definitely has the talent. Fantastic! That's so great to know. And Amina, I think one of the things you will have to do after this India's Got Chess talent is to play more tournaments. her internet is a little choppy but uh, okay i'm sure she will listen to this after the stream uh, yes amina did you hear okay okay let's have our next contestant uh, joining in is <clears throat> we have bhavik ahuja Havik is from Delhi. He is 15 years old. He has a rating of 2114, and he is a very talented youngster. Let's listen to him. What he has to say. Hello, everyone. I'm Havik Ahuja, 15, from Delhi, with a live fairy rating of 2114. 
As former world champion Robert James Fisher once said, Chess is my life. I can't fathom this life without chess. This game has shaped me into the person I am today. From 2017, I haven't taken any professional chess coaching and hence India's Got Chess Talent is a massive opportunity for me to take coaching from some of the best chess coaches out there and take my game to the next level. So that was Bhavik there and Bhavik has actually won the World Open Amateur section recently and has pumped up his rating by nearly 200 ELO points. Bhavik, uh, that's true, right? Uh, yes, sir. Namaste, sir. Fantastic. And Bhavik is just 15, but he travels all across the world all alone, which is yes. uh, very commendable. And Bhavik, uh, what are you keen on learning from Swapnil today? So I'm really excited for this session, sir. So first of all, I really want an insight into how a grandmaster thinks about chess and their point of view on this game. And also, I really want some advice on my openings and how I should build my opening repertoire. So those are the two main things I'm like focusing on and anything else, of course. Fantastic. And Swapnil, what are your uh, thoughts on uh, Bhavik's games? That you yeah, Bhavik is playing very strong for, uh, for his rating. This is what I noticed. Like uh, the games that he sent, uh, he beat some really good players. Uh, players who are, who are uh, really uh, very strong players right now. He has beaten them. So he has a lot of potential. And uh, the one thing which I surely think he should work on is his opening reporter because I think he's, uh, his knowledge in the opening is surely an area which he, he should try to improve. Mm-hmm. But, so, and also like his annotations because he wrote a lot of detailed comments. So that is a great thing. I enjoyed reading his comments. Very Thanks. nice. Actually, uh, I think what Swapnil mentioned and Bhavik, what you wanted to learn sort of meet and maybe this seems like a good uh, point when you will improve your opening repertoire. Yes, yeah, sir. Definitely, sir. Okay. Let's go to our next contestant. We have uh, from Mumbai, Maharashtra, 23-year-old Raj Pandya, who has a rating of 1271. Let's hear from Raj. Hello guys, my name is Raj Pandya. I am from Mumbai. My FIDE Classical rating is 1280. According to me, chess is a small version of life. India has got chess that matters a lot to me. I am very happy and excited about it because I am sure it will bring me one step closer in making my dream come true. Raj, welcome. Raj, what do you do apart from being a chess player? Like, what what else do you do? Mm-hmm. I'm a working professor. I, I I work in IT. You work in IT? Yeah, software. So, so so how would you get time to work on your chess? Um, between the like breaks of work and also like the leftover time, I only practice chess. And I read books and after lockdown, I have again been in touch with chess and uh, recently I went to two rapid tournaments, uh, two rated tournaments also. Okay. And how do I'm managing somehow. Ah, So you, in spite of your work schedule, you are able to find time for chess. Yes. I had a vision like uh, that. I will also play chess when I start working. Okay. So the. That's very nice. And what do you want to learn today from Swapnil? Anything which he has to teach. But uh, uh, to my knowledge, I have to improve in middle game concepts and end game. So more of that. Okay. And Swapnil, uh, were you able to look at Raj's games? Uh, Actually, uh, there were two players whose ideas I was not sure. So which one is which? So I think one was Raj maybe because also he didn't mention in his annotation that uh, he is the one and also someone else. So there were uh, two players whom I could not figure out. Uh, So maybe uh, in the group, if you tell me, I'll look at uh, your games after this session or by tomorrow and then I'll give you feedback. Okay. Uh, I think Raj, you had put your, you had not put your name, but maybe your ID, online ID. So, so I yeah, yeah. got a bit confused there. So there were two players, uh, this, and uh, one more thing I wanted to point out is that some players uh, sent mo- most of their one games. So what I also need is that uh, games which you have lost or which you have drawn so that I can figure out what your exact weakness is. Because if you win and in most of the games, opponent isn't playing uh, up to the mark. 
Mm-hmm. So I'm not able to figure out uh, what mistake you guys are making, right? So if someone who has sent all his winning games, uh, it's better you also send me some games that you have lost so that I can get a better idea of your weaknesses. Very cool. For sure. I think that would be a nice thing for everyone. Uh, let's go to the next player. We have Kunal Gupta, who is from Mumbai and he's 18 years old. He is unrated. Let's hear from Kunal. Hello, my name is Kunal Gupta. I'm from Govandi, Mumbai. I'm currently unrated, but uh, my Lee Chess rating is 20 to 100 plus. Uh, what is chess regarding to me? Uh, too much to go. What do Indian God chess talent mean to me? Thank you for such a wonderful opportunity to me once again. Thank you. So that was Kunal and Kunal is although unrated, but he is very, very inspired and motivated to improve his chess. So let's get him on the screen and speak with him. Hello, Kunal. Hello, sir. How are you? Fine, sir. How are you? Kunal, you, what's your aim in chess? Is it to become an IM? Yes, sir. But why not a GM? Sir, because his age. Because of age. Oh, okay. So maybe Sopnil can uh, help to say. Uh, Sopnil, was he, were you able to see his games or wa- was the there was a problem? I think this uh, Kunal was the other player mm-hmm. whom I was confused because the I think he gave that uh, online ID, Leeches ID and Chess.com ID. So I was not sure about his game. So again, you can message me in the group and I'll take a look at your games. Mm-hmm. And uh, don't worry about the age, Kunal, uh, because I also became uh, GM very late. So it is not a main issue. The main thing is that how how much focus you can give to your uh, chess ambitions and how much uh, efforts can you put. So if you are ready to put, I think it's not a big issue. Mm, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I mean, 18 is not such a uh, old age. Yeah. You're, you're quite young. So And just aim to become a very strong player. Don't just, you know, keep your mind fixed on titles like I am and GM. Just uh, aim to become an all-round player, a very strong player, and keep working towards that. Okay, Okay. fantastic. Thank you, Kunal. And let's have the next one. We have Nirnay Garg, who is from Gurgaon, Haryana, 13 years old, rated 1768. Let's hear what Nirnay has to say. My name is Nirnay Garg. I am from Haryana. My current standard rating is 1758. Chess is my passion. I love playing chess and learning new ideas every day. India's Good Chess Talent is a Chess Base India initiative. It is a platform that can help me improve my game by providing expert guidance. Okay, so that was Nirnai. And you know, the nice thing about Nirnai today is that he went to play a tournament and he won it with 6 out of 6. So that's a very special day for him. So hello, Nirnai. Congratulations. Hi, sir. Uh, and you won a tournament today. Yes, sir. That That's a very nice thing. Uh, and Nirnai, uh, have you ever uh, met Swapnil before? Uh, no, sir. Not in person. No? And uh, do you? what would you like to learn from him? So I'm excited for anything that he will teach me, but I would like to, uh, in particular, uh, focus on time control and how to handle time pressure. I think those are some of my weakness. Mm. Actually, Sopnil has written a beautiful article on this, if I'm not mistaken, right, Sopnil? Once, uh, yeah, yeah. I had... think it was published in Chessbase India as well. On time and pressure. also chessbase.com. Right, right. It was a very detailed article. Uh, I thought a lot about that topic at that point. And you can always refer to that article to gain more, more insights on time pressure. Sure, sir. I will. Thank you. If you Google. But uh, just one thing I want to uh, let you know uh, from my experience is that, uh, see, you're very young right now and you should really work hard, really be focused on removing this weakness of time pressure because as the age, as you become older, this uh, weakness of time pressure kind of sets in, you know, it's very difficult to remove it afterwards. So it's uh, this is the right time for you to remove this weakness of temperature uh, from the roots. Okay, sir. Sure. And congratulations for winning the tournament. Thank you, sir. And Swapnil, have you seen his games, Nirnai's games? Uh, what about his play? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, he needs to work on his calculations. That is for sure. And he needs to take decisions faster as he's saying uh, the main issue is time pressure. Hmm. So he needs to work, he needs to calculate faster and take decisions faster. Okay, that's very interesting insights. Uh, and now for the last player from the team, Karthik S from Bangalore, 30 years old, FIDE rating of 1446. Let's hear what Karthik has So to my say. name is Karthik and I'm from this place called as Hubli, which is in North Karnataka. But right now I stay at Bangalore. And what has been my rating? So my peak rating has been 1527 and right now I am around 1412 rated, FIDE rated. And what does chess mean to me? Well, as Gary Kasparov says, chess is a game of unlimited beauty. So what I love the most about chess is you never stop learning. And what does India's got chess talent mean to me is that uh, I consider this as a great and you know, a wonderful opportunity to take my game to the next level. I definitely want to be uh, a title player in the coming future. That was Karthik and welcome Karthik here. How are you doing? And you are one of the, uh, you know, one of those participants who works as well and plays chess. So uh, managing your uh, life, uh, how is that going? Yeah, uh, first of all, thanks sir, for welcoming me. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's uh, tough to have a you know, day job, work from work the entire day and then play chess. So yeah, I try to spend whatever free time I get on chess, especially on weekends. Ah, okay. And try to manage. Fantastic. And uh, Karthik, uh, what would you like to learn from Swapnil? So uh, actually, I've worked with Sopnil's uh, team uh, in the past. I have taken one session from him. So uh, definitely looking forward to increase my overall game strength. I'm open to learn uh, everything from him, whatever I could grasp. Okay, tremendous. And Sopnil, uh, have you checked Karthik's game? Yeah, I've checked his games. First of all, Karthik, very good annotations to the games. I really enjoyed it. So whenever you know uh, my students or anyone in general who sends me games and if they are very well annotated it gives me deeper insights as i mentioned earlier so every uh, this is for everyone uh, so whenever you send games to your coaches try to send it with little bit of annotations you don't need to have a very good grasp on english but just uh, tell your thoughts so that a coach can uh, get better insights uh, in your playing style and uh, secondly, Karthik, uh, I think you should, uh, it's really tough for you, I believe, to uh, get more time out of your working schedule, right? Yeah, uh, it is tough, but I try to put in extra efforts and I try to uh, right. work on weekends mainly. All right. So I think uh, Karthik has a good potential. I'm, I think he's surely a very underrated player. So if he gets more chances to play open uh, this tournaments and all, I, I'm sure that he will improve. But of course, at this level, should try to improve as much as possible in di different aspects of the game. Mm. He's going to play two tournaments, he said, in the coming days. So I think I uh, that would be very interesting. So this is Team Chess Patshala that we have here. And uh, we have all the members of the team here. And I think, uh, guys, uh, all the best to all of you. Uh, today is your training. Later on, there will be, of course, a match against uh, the team of Wings of Fire that will happen against Shyam Sundar's team. So, we'll come to that later. But let's first begin with the training. Swapnil, shall we do that? Yeah. Okay. So, let's go. Let's go here and begin with the training. Uh, you can tell me what should we start with. So, in the first so first of all, uh, yeah, basically, first of all, what the, the main topic, as I mentioned earlier, is mastering weak pawns. And mm -hmm. weak pawns is a very important aspect of positional chess. Uh, you will see a lot of positional games where uh, there are plans targeted towards weak pawns of uh, your opponent. And there are a lot of maneuvers and a lot of plans so that we can exploit our, uh, we can exploit our opponent's weak pawns. So this is a very important aspect that... Uh, uh, we should have a good grasp of, a uh, good knowledge about. So let's start learning about pick pawns. So the first thing we should do is we should try to, we'll go through different types of pick pawns. So I figured out uh, after a lot of research that there could be six types of pick pawns. So we'll go through them quickly one by one so that it will be easier for easier for you to recognize those weak pawns when we solve uh, the, when we solve exercises on this theme. 
So this is the first type of weak pawn, which is known as the double, uh, double pawns cluster. Usually whenever we see double pawns on uh, one file, like in this case, it is there are double pawns on the F file, F7 and F6. We immediately call it as double pawns, right? But according to me, there are two types of double pawns. The first one is double pawns cluster, which we can see here. So this cluster is always uh, double pawns on one file. Here it is F7 and F6, and there will be always a pawn uh, near to this pawn. So either on E7 or on G7. So usually these three pawns together is known as a double pawns cluster. And uh, why uh, double pawns can be a weakness is because uh, they lack mobility. So they can't uh, start, they, they can't start pushing themselves quickly. They will, you know, have to first move, the F6 pawn has to move, then the F7 pawn has to move. So they lack mobility. So you as white should try to uh, uh, see one important thing is that in this type of structure, the ideal structure for black is to put the pawn on F5 and then the pawn to G6, right? So this is the best structure for black. If you have double pawns on the F file and as white, you should try to prevent it. So you should try to play E4 here, preventing black from playing uh, G6 because if, you, if they play G6, the F6 pawns become very weak, right? So you should try to prevent uh, black's ideal setup, ideal pawn structure, which is F7, G6 and F5. And as black, you should try to obtain the ideal pawn structure, which is by playing F5 and then place the pawn on G6. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are a lot of openings where uh, black voluntarily, black or even white voluntarily ex uh, accepts a double pawn cluster. I think we can show one example. Yeah, so Trompowski defense, uh, it is bishop into f6 and black takes e into f6, right? Uh, G into f6 or e into f6, doesn't matter. So they are going to accept a double pawns cluster right in the opening. So why are they accepting this double pawns cluster when we think of it as a weakness? Because White has to give up his bishop pair in order to achieve that, right? So black gets a bishop pair while white ruins black's pawn structure. So this is a dynamically balanced position. And uh, they keep, and again, in, in this type of positions, you'll observe that black ultimately goes for f5 and g6 and tries to bring his knight on f6. Ah, yeah. yeah, similarly here, gf6, same double pawns cluster. And you can observe this double pawns cluster right in the opening in a lot of variations. So again, black will go f5 at some point and then they will place their knight on f6. Hmm. Right, so we can move on to the next one. Okay. This is another example from Nimzu Indian. Uh, this is from, yeah, uh, Rosalim, right, yeah. So bishop b5 and bishop c6. Again, uh, they will take bc6 or dc6 and they will accept a double pawns cluster. So whenever you are studying an opening and if such a pawn structure appears on the board, Try to remember the general ideas in your mind so that in the middle game that will help you. So observe the pawn structure closely in which your opening you choose. The main thing is uh, to have a good grasp of the pawn structures. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is a cluster here. And then moving on to Nimzo Indian defense. Yeah. So this is three and take right so again a pawn cluster and generally if uh, you know if white gets c5 here then it would be an ideal pawn cluster right that we just discussed so pawn on c5 d4 and c3 but usually you will observe that black will try to play c5 immediately and block the pawn on c4 so that black will then play b6 bishop a6 knight c6 knight a5 and try to hit that weak pawn on c4 and white on the other hand will try to exploit his double bishop and try to create some attacking chances on the king side right so something like this yeah yeah white plays in the center black tries to attack c4 and that's how it goes right okay uh so this was about double pawns double pawns cluster double pawns cluster okay next uh, is the isolated pawn uh, it's a very famous well known which you will find in a lot of uh, books and again it comes from a lot of openings karukan defense Name 70 and QGD and so many other, other openings, right? So again, the theme here, if you are playing from the white side is very clear. You should try to take the game to an end game, uh, a very obvious theme, and you should try to hit this big pawn on D5, right? And in general, try to maintain the rooks when you are playing against uh, the isolated queen pawn. Don't exchange the rooks. You can exchange the minor pieces, but try to maintain the rooks because if you have rooks against an isolated queen pawn, 
it becomes much easier to attack that weak pawn and ultimately win it. So, so usually, usually what white will do is, you know, white will play rook c1 if black's rook is on c8 and try to exchange on the c file. This is uh, better to be avoided because we want to maintain rooks on the board. Hmm. Got it. Okay. So this is one example. isolated structure yeah. of isolated pawn. And this is the next one. So we can go to the next uh, pawn structure straight away, I believe. Ah. Okay, this is just an example of uh, isolate, the openings which ah, accepts okay. isolated pawn. Okay, so let's go to the next type of isolated pawn. And that one is... Just a second. This one. All right. So this is a double isolated pawns because they are isolated since there are no pawns on either side of uh, the pawns on f file and they are uh, double pawns right so double isolated pawns and these pawns are really really weak let's say if, let's imagine if the black king is on g8 and we and they have a pawn structure of f7 and f6 and there are no other pawns on either side usually uh, i have seen a, in a lot of games that it leads to a very strong attack and uh, usually a checkmate for black's king so uh, this pawn structure is a very weak pawn structure in general and uh, we should try to exploit it as much as possible and if if these pawns are on the open files then it becomes a big headache for black right okay uh, should we look at one example of such a structure yeah we can take a look at okay so this is from catalan d4, d5, c4, e6, knight f3, knight f6, g3, bishop e7, castles, take, dc4, knight e5, knight c6, take, So this is take. the main line. And now knight a3, bishop a3, and the board is filled with uh, isolated doubled pawns. Yeah, yeah, so we have uh, double isolated pawns on the a file for white, and for black it is triple isolated pawns on the c file, right? Now the problem with black is that all the all the pawns on the c file are on the open file, so white can easily attack it. While white pawns are on the closed file on the a file, so it's not a big issue for black uh, for white. So if your pawns uh, are doubled, if your opponent's pawns are doubled and it's on the open file, it's a very good news for you because you can attack those pawns quickly. Hmm. Got it. So here, uh, this is one example. Let's go to the next structure. And the next structure is this one. Yeah, so this is backward pawns. I am I'm sure that everyone is well aware of this uh, pawn structure as well. Again, it can come from many, many openings. And uh, if opponent doesn't have anything, any compensation for such a backward pawn, then he's uh, into huge troubles. And usually, again, if the backward pawn is on an open file, it becomes very easier for us to attack that weak pawn on c6. So, Apnil, how do we define a backward pawn? Uh, usually, the side pawns of uh, of a backward pawn are uh, have moved ahead, so mm. it remains backward. So, let's say the pawn there won't be any pawn on b7 or d7. Mm. All those pawns are either disappeared from the board or they are moved ahead than the c6 pawn. So, it's so not the, the, uh, it's not called isolated pawn because there is d5 pawn, but it is weak. Like because yeah, it is weak. Yeah, because it has potential to become support. You know, black and maybe play C5 and C4 at some point. So mm -hmm. it's not very isolated in general. And uh, yeah, it's backward. And usually the main problem with the backward pawn is not only that the pawn can become a weakness, can become a target for our pieces, but also the square in front of the backward pawn is an outpost for opponent's pieces. So the C5 square is very, very weak. And white will try to place his knight over there or the bishop or the rook. And uh, that's a huge drawback of a backward pawn that the square in front of the backward pawn is a huge weakness all the time. Mm. Got it. Okay. Here is an example of a backward pawn. And... Again, black accepts a backward d6 pawn here. Sicilian Sveshnikov, very popular opening. So what does uh, black get in return is that he gets a good majority on the king side, a good center control, and he tries to play on that. While White's idea in this uh, Sveshnikov variation is very clear, 
He'll try to occupy that D5 square with uh, all his pieces and keep a good control over that square. And slowly he will try to grind and try to attack that D6 pawn. Hmm. Got it. Okay. So this was about backward pawns. Let's go to the next one. This is fixed pawns. Uh, this is a very rare concept, I believe. I haven't seen it in much uh, in many books on positional chess on pawn structures. But uh, the here the pawns here are kind of fixed, right? It's uh, they are kind of locked. The b6 pawn can't move because of the b7 pawn, and the a5 a6 pawn are also standing in front of each other. So these are fixed pawns, and the last pawn uh, in this in this pawn chain is always very weak. So for example, the a5 pawn for white is weak. And if black manages to get his pieces around the a5 pawn, try to attack it, then both the a5 and the b6 pawn falls. And for black, the b7 pawn, the last pawn in the pawn chain is very, very weak. So as white, you should try to maneuver, maneuver your pieces, try to place your pieces on such squares so that you can pressure the b7 pawn and try to win it. And another benefit of winning pawns like b7 or pawns like a5 is that we immediately have a passed pawn. So let's say if you manage to win the b7 pawn, you have a very well strong protected pass pawn on the b6 square, right? Mm. Uh, similarly, if you manage to win the a5 pawn as black, you have a pass pawn on the a6 on the a5. So uh, this fixed pawn is a huge, uh, is a very important technique in the end game because in the end game, you can try to fix your opponent's pawn and try to target uh, those fixed pawns and try to win them. And we will see an illustrative example where uh, a strong grandmaster fixed opponent spawns and he just won the end game. Amazing. Okay. It's one example of fixed pawn, if we can look at, is from French defense. Advanced variation. And right. So here, white has got space because of his pawn on e5, but a pawn on d4 is a, a weakness in general and black will try to play against that pawn on d4 they will try to place the knight on f5 and try to create some pressure and in general you will observe that as the end game approaches it is black who tries to press in such type of end games because the d4 pawn uh, can always be hit and it can always be pressurized while white will generally try to keep the pieces and try to attack on the king side hmm. got it okay so guys have do you have any doubts until now from what you have learned no sir yeah everyone's clear yes sir, yes, sir. If you have guys any... if any doubts you can ask me not an issue yeah if everything is clear doubts, right yeah all are fine it seems everyone uh, so let's go to the next structure so this is the last structure. Again, it is a very famous one. It is uh, Pawn Islands. So the player who has more Pawn Islands generally has a slightly weaker position compared to the player who has lesser Pawn Islands. So here we can observe that white has three Pawn Islands, one on A2, B2, the other on D3, E2, and the other on G3, H2. So we have three Pawn Islands as white, while black has only two Pawn Islands, F7, G7, uh, F7, and C5, B7, and A7. So try to keep as minimum pawn islands as possible and uh, that's a, a good that's a sign of a good healthy pawn structure but again there are some openings where one side voluntarily accepts more pawn islands and they try to play solid chess so we can see an example of such an opening yeah so this is one so this is a four knights uh, defense so d5 d5 cd5 and we can already see that black has uh, two pawn islands, uh, black has three pawn islands and white has two, right? But uh, white, black still stays very solid. So one uh, very important thing that I wanted to point out is that, let's say if your opponent has a weak pawn structure or if you manage to spoil your opponent's pawn structure, it doesn't mean that you have a decisive advantage immediately. Like for example, in tactics, we see that if you find one correct move and it is game over, right? In uh, positional stuffs, in uh, positional aspects of chess, like weak pawns and so on, you will get a very comfortable position if you manage to weaken your opponent's pawn structure, but it's not like you're just going to win the game on the spot. So you have to grind it down. But uh, one thing I can guarantee is that if you master this positional concepts, you will have a very easy life and you will touch, you can torture your opponent for a long time. Mm -hmm. Got it. And uh, here it's like black has more pawn islands, so it should be bad, but it's not yeah. so bad. Yeah. 
it is slightly bad but it is not so bad so that's the thing uh, black will uh, have to black is slightly on the back foot we can say but again it's uh, just opening and black has his own uh, pluses got it okay so should we look at the next segment yeah so now uh, we have a look briefly looked at all the types of pick pawns now you have to keep them in mind keep them very clear in your head and uh, in the positions that arise uh, from this moment onwards you'll have to find ways to spoil your opponent's pawn structure so first uh, we will look at few illustrated examples now there are different techniques by which we can spoil our opponent's pawn structure the first one is we can use exchanges to weaken our opponent's pawn structure the second thing is we can use pawn breaks and the third thing is uh, uh, we can pawn. fix our opponent's pawns, right? Mm. So the first illustrated example where Karyakin is playing with the black pieces, he uses exchanges beautifully to ruin his opponent's pawn structure. So we can have a look at it. I think uh, Sagal can flip uh, mm. and take the back pieces. Okay, knight f6, knight c3, e6. It is the Pano Botvinnik, uh, knight f3, bishop d4, and he plays the move c5. So c5 is already an error because uh, the main line is uh, c into d5 and even bishop d3 but c5 is un uh, very premature so he plays c5 oops sorry castles bishop d3 and now uh... and now it is black to play so can you uh, guess have a quick guess at what black should do okay guys try to think what black should do and also in the chat Guys, those who are watching it live also try to think what should black do in this position. And if you have found the answer, please raise your hand so Swapnil can ask you. Yes, anyone? Okay, uh, there are raised hands there. Uh, so, Shubhi, would you like... Uh, Swapnil, you can uh, choose. Yeah, yeah, Shubhi, I think you can go ahead. What do you think? Uh, yes, sir. Sir, I think here B6 and after uh, white captures, uh, white will have three uh, pawn islands and we will have two pawn islands. So, maybe we will get uh, some better chances there. Very good, very good, Shubhi. So, that's the correct idea. And usually what uh, happens in this type of structure is that the bishop is on e7. So whenever we play b6, white gets a chance to maintain his pawn structure with b4. But here the difference is that we have a bishop on b4 and that is why c5 was premature. So we can hit white's pawn structure with b6. So a simple move, but it gives black a very comfortable position, right? And it starts creating problems for white. So b6, c into b6. Yeah. Again, uh, we can take the pawn on b6. Uh, which, but there are other options as well. So you can think and tell me what do you think should black do. Again, a quick guess. We don't have to calculate too deeply. The way in the chat, uh, people who had guessed B6 were Pritham and Samhita. So well done, guys. And now what do you do? Should you recapture on B6? If yes, with what piece? Okay, Pratibha and Kunal are ready. So we can start with Pratibha. Sir, can we take bishop into c3, pawn into c3 and create one more weakness over there? Uh, which is the weakness after bishop c3, b3? Sir, that uh, c3 pawn. Very good. So which, uh, which weak pawn is that exactly? Can you tell me? Sir, backward pawn. Very good, Pratibha. That's right. So bishop into c3 is actually the accurate move order. But I think in the game, uh, Karyakin took on b6 first and then he captured on c3. Wow, Pratibha, you played better than Karyakin. It's amazing. Right, so uh, I think it, it ultimately transposes. So c into b6, a into b6, uh, short castles, and now bishop into c3, as Pratibha told. That's the correct idea. So, so here, here we are uh, taking with the queen is better or taking with the pawn? Or I think it's more or, less, more or less the same. But uh, with the if you take with the a pawn, you also activate your rook on the sleeping rook on a8, right? Mm. So it has this added advantage. So a into b6 could be slightly preferable. Okay, castles. 
So bishop c3, a very good move by Karyakin. So we are giving up the bishop pair, but here comes another very good move for black. What should black do? Mm. Come on, guys, try to answer as quickly as possible. Black to move, guys. What do you do? Very okay. not easy. Nirne, Shobhi, Bhavik, very quick. Well, you well done. So let's ask uh, Bhavik this time. What do you think, Bhavik? Uh, so I guess bishop a6 trading the d3 bishop for our weak uh, c8 bishop because that's uh, a better bishop for white. Very good, very good. So bishop a6 is the right move. So we uh, two we we are doing two trades back to back, one on c3. And the very important one on a6. So bishop a6 is a very good move. Uh, and also, Swapnil, when opponent has bishop pair, we exchange one of the bishops. So maybe that comes here, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that is a very important principle. Well pointed out, Sagar. So bishop a6 is a good move. And as we will see, after the exchange of uh, the right square bishops, uh, black's, uh, white's queen side becomes very, very weak, especially the c4 square. And as I mentioned earlier in the introduction, that whenever opponent has a backward pawn, uh, the uh, the square right in front of it becomes very weak, right? So here the c4 square is a huge weakness. And we will see how Karyakin exploits it. So we can go ahead. Right. And also in the chat, we have had uh, Om, Swati, Aniket, Chessmatic and Samhita finding this move. So well done, guys. Uh, keep it up and keep trying to learn from this. So in the game, Bishop g5 was played. Knight right. bd7. Bishop a6, rook a6, queen b3. Right. And now I think we can go ahead. We can go ahead. Eight, queen rook c1, rook c8, queen b3. So we can see how Karyakin is bringing all his pieces on the queen side and slowly creating pressure. And now right. we, we, we can go ahead, Sagar. We okay. can just uh, you, you can see how he take exploited. 94, 92. F6, take, take. Rook C4. Oh my god. This is this is ultimate uh... right. So he okay, fine. <laughs> this <laughs> okay, it's it's okay. There are a lot of critical moments ahead. Okay. So knight c5 is the very good move here for black. I should have been more careful. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry. I blundered here. Uh, this was a question to you, but I still don't understand why knight c5. Did you guys figure out? Yeah, Kunal, why knight c5? Because the uh, knight c5 or d c5 bishop f4 is hanging, and uh, I and, uh, and what is the knight threat? C4, uh, idea is knight a4 and, and uh, d3 square are very weak, right? So, knight c5 creates multiple threats, knight d3, knight a4, and that's why knight c5 is just a winning move, black, right? Perfect. So, knight c All right, so you observed what happened in this game. Black immediately created a weak pawn, the c3 pawn, uh, and also the a2 pawn is isolated pawn, which is also important to note. So, black, white, uh, so black managed to create weak pawns right in the opening, and then he just uh, piled uh, on it, right? He exerted pressure, and there was simply no way for white to defend against this pressure. Let's move on to the next example. So, this was an example of using exchanges to ruin your opponent's pawn structure. So always watch out for such exchanges if uh, you can get a better pawn structure in this manner. Okay, so now we go to pawn breaks. Yeah, so we can see an example on pawn breaks. And I think we can quickly go to uh, the 23rd move. And it is black to play after that. Right, so white plays knight h4, hitting the pawn on h5. Can you guys quickly figure out what should be the correct move for black here? Black to play. Okay. Okay, Raj is ready with the move, but let's wait for a couple of minutes. And guys, um, please think as if it's your game so that uh, you will make that move in your game as well. Many times in training, we are very uh, like, you know, ek pawn, yeah, try something amazing uh, or something pawn, like that. Abhi kuch sack <laughs> you know, we'll play like daring chess, but on the board, we can never 
play that way so try to think as if it's your own game all right uh, let's ask well, uh, let's ask raj this time the next we'll go to nirnay uh, b4 b4 very good raj very good so why do I, why are you playing b4 here uh because then d4 pawn becomes vulnerable and the structure is also broken, broken right so such pawn breaks can give you a very healthy pawn structure and it, it can help uh, us to ruin our opponent pawn structure right so b4 is a very good pawn break so also watch out for such pawn breaks in the exercises that we are going to solve next okay so b4 uh of course g6 instead of b4 is not a good idea because white takes knight into g6 uh f into g6 bishop into g6 and our entire king side pawn structure is shattered when h is coming next and our king is very weak right so g6 was out of question we have to go for b4 and try to get counter play uh, white takes queen into h5 b into c3 Four, queen into h5 b takes c3 rook c3 knight d4 and we won a very important center pawn while white's attacking chances on the king side aren't uh, so great yet so in fact, it is black uh, who gains counterplay and who is slightly better in this position. Thanks to that pawn break with b4, right? So keep this, keep such pawn breaks in mind when you solve exercises. Let's move on to the next uh, example where we fix up on pawns and try to hit them. Right, very cool example. Actually, b4 was not at all easy to see. Uh, let's go to the next one. wanted to also just uh, see actually in the chat a couple of people had found before swati arjun ashish and kavnur samhita and dipesh well done guys okay. well done Chris. all so, right so last example on spoiling your opponent's pawn structure uh we can i'll just tell you sagar which movie are going to go hmm. we can go to the 30th movie 30th movie yeah Black so here play. after king e3 it is black to play what should be the best plan for black here then Nirna is ready with the answer let's wait for a couple of minutes and ask Nirna after that yeah i think guys this is the very nice game between andrekin and no, Nihal Sarin is white and Andrekin is black. Yeah, this was a textbook game, a very textbook end game by Andrekin. And it looks like, a, you know, very drawish end game. Because the material is equal, we have only a bishop here on the board. But this is where the power of weak pawns come into play. All right, so let's ask Nirne, what do you think? So if I would have been in this position, I would have played f5, f5 because with the idea. so uh, the bishop, uh, white bishop is now trapped on the king side, and if white wants to free his bishop, he needs to play g4, and after g4 we can capture, and after that the pawns of g4 and h5 are weak, and the mm -hmm. pawn on a2, b3, and c4 can also be exploited. With weaknesses on both sides of the board, it will be difficult for white to defend. Right, uh, that is one way to think. But also after f5, maybe you can play g3, f4. Is that possible? And block your pawns on the right space. But sir, uh, after that, we can go bishop e4 followed by bishop b1. Followed by bishop b1, okay. And then can I go g4? Uh, but sir, uh, we can go bishop a2, bishop b3. Yeah, so let's say after f4, bishop e4, g4. Uh, bishop b1, g into f5, e into f5 you want to take, right? Yeah. Now if I play king d2, I'm not sure whether it works, but uh, what will you do now? So bishop a2, king, uh, bishop, a2. bishop a2, king c2, you have to play maybe a4, then I also yes, take yes. the f5 on later. So it's a bit complex, maybe it's possible, but it's still a bit complex. So if, as with f5, what you are trying to do is you are trying to play against the bishop on g6, but there's a better plan for black, okay? But uh, good try. f5 was a good idea. Uh, what do you think, uh, Raj? a5, a4. With the idea of what? After a4? 
then uh, if the opponent takes it, then we can get the C4 pawn. And if okay. opponent does not take okay. it, then uh, we can take the uh, B B3 pawn. And then. But uh, uh, what did you achieve by that? Because uh, the pawn B3 is still there, no? So A5, A4, it's a good, interesting idea. After A B3, A B3, the position remains more or less the same, right? Maybe B3 is slightly weak, but it's difficult to exploit it so much. But okay, decent idea. What do you think should be? Sir, you're muted. Yeah. Now you. Uh, sir, I was having the same plan A5, A4, and then I was thinking for the plan that Nirne suggested that F5 and all. Uh, then the bishop will be. All right, all right. Karthik, let's uh, have one last thing. Yeah, I was actually thinking about A5, A4, and uh, on the queen side, try to create second weakness, and if if possible, we can go A3, fixing the structure there. Right, right. So and that's the correct I, idea. That's the correct idea. Very good. So mm -hmm. A5, A4 has to be played. That is one thing. But we don't have to take on A with A into B3. We have to play A3. So that A2 pawn becomes a target, right? And if uh, at some point we manage to block the bishop, we can target the pawn on uh, A2. All right. So A5, A4, and A3. Mm -hmm. So generally, people are worried that they cannot break through such a position. So they are afraid of yeah, closing. to close the position. Right, but uh, you know, objectively it might be a draw, but we have to create as many problems for our opponent as much possible, right? Mm. That's what Andrik did in this game against Nihal. So here he went for f5. So that has to be played, but first we have to fix opponent's pawn before uh, initiating action on the uh, king's side. Right. Okay. Right. So here I think uh, is another critical moment, and it is black to play. Can you guys find the best move for black? Mm. Okay, let's see. Guys, in the chat as well, try to think what should you play here as black? So we have managed to fix a big weakness on A2, but we have to somehow try to exploit it, right? So what should be your plan in that case? Katiba is ready with the move. I think we can ask her. She's ready. Pratibha, go on. Sir, can we take uh, f into g4, f into g4 and fix the pawn again with the g5? Yeah, that is one possibility because the g4 can be a weak pawn. But again, our focus should be on how we can exploit the biggest weakness. That is the a2 pawn, right? So you have to focus on that. But also, okay. Pratibha, you forgot about en Oh. Uh. Yeah, that is the right. So, yeah. Okay, uh, Raj, what do you think? Raj is thinking. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Uh, Nirnay. So I would play f4. So after which, if uh, the white plays king f4, then we go king d4, followed by king c3, king b2, king a2. And if he just retreats, then also we go king d4, and we have the uh, key square for the king. And eventually, we can uh, uh, make uh, make white go in sook Very good. So f4 is the correct move. We have to distract white's king so that we can get entry for our own king, right? So f4 is a good move. Now, if we place king e4, we can play bishop c6 check, and again force the king to take the f4 pawn. Because if we place king e5, then we can take the f3 pawn, right? So he has to take the pawn on f4 at some point, and uh, that's it. After king d4, there's no way for uh, white to stop our king march to b2, right? And that's how we exploit it. So that's the thing. Uh, when you push, when you fix the opponent's pawn, uh, pawns, maybe it's not very clear how we are going to exploit it in the future, but that is usually the right way to do. If you have control over the position, and if if you have the option of uh, fixing your opponent's pawn on weak squares. Then you should try to do that, right? So here he played a5, a4, a3. Maybe he was not entirely sure how he is going to exploit it, but he knew that it is the right way, right thing to do, right? So whenever you get such opportunity, you should try to fix opponent's pawns. So we looked at three techniques on how we can spoil our opponent's pawn structure. The first one uh, was of Karyakin's game where he used exchanges to spoil opponent's pawn structure. The second was we looked at the pawn break b4, where uh, we were able to completely shatter white's queen set pawn structure. And this where he played a5, a4, a3 and fixed white's pawn on a2 and ultimately he went on to explore that pawn. So keep these three techniques in mind and now we are going to solve exercises 
based on this topic of exploiting or uh, of spoiling upon spawn structure, right? So let's go. Oh, okay. I'm excited. Let's see, guys, how good you are. And also in the chat, uh, all the best. Try to think what would you do here? Okay. It is white to play. What should white do? Take some time. We are not in any hurry. But once you're confident with your answer, you can let us know. And so also people watching these, it live, right? Yeah. All these positions are uh, are found by you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Guys, white to play. What should you do? You can see how uh, serious trainers work. They actually create material out of games which they see regularly. And this was a very big thing that Mark Doretsky used to do. Uh, Jakob Agard. Now we see even RB Ramesh who does it. And also uh, Swapnil Sham yesterday. So all these amazing trainers, they work hard day in and out uh, collecting such positions. So now, guys, what do you do here as white and actually in the chat very interestingly uh, we have like seven or eight people who have answered this it's very interesting yeah uh, very quick don't know a lot of talents know. out there <laughs> maybe next time sagar you should try to create more teams so yeah. that everyone gets a chance yes for sure more uh, coaches will be needed but for sure i think this already has been amazing like uh, and I'm, I'm sure i'll think about it all right so we have four hands raised so i think sagar for the exam thing uh, for this exercise thing you can pick uh, the players you can yeah. pick whom okay for sure. i'll uh, pick first the youngest of them all uh, which is shubhi shubhi what do you do uh, sir, I'm thinking that um, E6 is the base of F5 and G4 pawn, and uh, I should try to uh, put a break there. So that, that is why I'm thinking uh, here to play D5. As the D8 knight is hanging, and uh, if the pawn is pushed, then my uh, the F5 pawn gets weak, and I can move my knight simply, or uh, else I will get the E6 pawn. Mm. Yeah, very good, Shubhi. That's the right answer. So we have to play t5 and we have to hit on the weakest point in black spawn structure, which is the e6 spawn, right? So Bhavik and uh, Karthik, same answers? Uh, yeah, sir. So yeah. e5 and then so ed, that's knight f5, knight takes, knight takes, bishop d8 is hanging and after e5, that's knight e6. Very good. So knight e6 is also coming up and there's no way for, there's simply no time for black to depend upon on f5, right? Yeah. So d5. And uh, yeah, e5 at a6, and it is just winning for white. In fact, Hare Krishna played d5 with the white pieces, and he won the game. Wow, fantastic! And also in the chat, we have Pritham, d5, Jaya, 14. Kavnur, Samhita, Rudra, Om, Swati, Srini, Official, and Aniket. Well done, guys. All of you have found the right answer. Okay, so should we go to the next one? Yeah, time for the next test. Another Hare Krishna game. Hare Krishna is master of positional chess, so you will find a lot of examples in his games. Okay. Okay, it is white to play. This is one of my favorites. So what should white do? Very tough. You think it's tough, Saga? Uh, actually, it's very tough if the they did not know the theme, yeah? Mm, that's right. But now also, yeah, it's not so simple. Let's see how many of them are able to guess. Okay, my teammates are ready with answers. Interesting. You still have a couple of minutes and take your time. Bhavik, do you keep your hand raised all the time or you actually? No, sir. I saw the position. Okay. Okay. Amina, are you able to follow? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Amina, will you give the answer to this one? Sir, I will try. Sorry? 
she is saying she will try i'll try yes yeah once you uh, have thought of it can you tell us the answer yes sir let's go okay so when you are ready you can ask the players hmm. okay we have uh, already few hands up let's ask uh, kunal gupta and then maybe if kunal doesn't uh, amina do you want to answer now or you are still thinking sir i am thinking so can i ask someone else yes sir okay you uh, you have to give one answer today okay amina kunal yeah let's okay. go with kunal p6 idea d idea b sub d4 sorry the b6 idea b sub d4 d5 d5 yeah yeah okay yeah so b6 uh, usually it doesn't have to be it, it doesn't uh, we don't need to have a very big idea for b6 but b6 feels so good because you know black wants to play b6 himself so if uh, black plays b6 uh, he will be able to join his pawns right he will be able to support the a5 pawn as well as the c5 pawn so we need to prevent that and we should play b6 so by playing b6 first of all both the c5 and the a5 pawn can become targets for our pieces at the same time the b7 pawn becomes fixed and we already have a bishop on f3 pressurizing it so b6 is like killing uh, three birds with one stone and white can then play rook p1 rook p5 that is also one idea and we can start hitting black pawns well done beautiful and also uh, in our chat it seems like everyone's uh, either copying each other or they are <laughs> all uh, very strong but well done guys uh, jt samhita arvin nimai madhumita hitendra aniket om and chessmatic and swati well done guys then i want to add something yes sir so though my preferred move was b6 only but sir i just wanted to ask if bishop d5 also worked uh bishop d5 i think is fine as well but uh, if i play b6 then i want to take and play bishop f4 what yeah so yes, let's sir. say bishop d5 i'll play b6 suppose so yes sir bishop e6 and bishop f4 and rook e8 so bishop c7 at d7 rook d1 rook e7 then rook d6 rook d8 yeah. rook d6 yeah. yeah yeah so i think that should be fine uh maybe after bishop d5 uh, what else can i do you know guys swapnil is a master of defense yeah so he is always <laughs> looking at uh, very I'm bad defense position. resources he, even in bad position he is always looking at something or the other yeah so maybe yeah, it's actually possible it's quite possible maybe bishop d5 is possible too uh but yeah he just played b6 i think b6 is simpler than bishop yes, sir, d5 because we can also, yeah we can keep all our options open right and the bishop on f3 is also pressurizing the b7 pawn so for the moment we can keep it as it is right let's go to the next question okay let's go to the next one this one is white to move yeah this one should be is it is white to play try to be quick guys Okay, let's see. Okay, shall we Pratibha, you also have to think. Okay. And and give the answer also, not just think. Okay. They both are very smart. Yeah, Pratibha and Amina. They always say okay, and then they don't give the answer. <laughs> so it's very difficult to ask them the answer. But okay, guys, come on, think. You can. Uh, and uh, let's ask uh, Raj this time. 
Sir, can you tell the answer? Oh, yes, yes. Oh. Amina, if uh, Raj, is it okay if Amina gives the answer? Yes, sure, sir. Okay, Amina, let's go. In the P7. Knight takes B7, okay. Rook takes B7. Bishop takes D5. Okay. He takes D5. So what did you achieve, Amina, by exchanging these two pieces? Sir, that is a double pawn. Ah, double isolated pawns. Okay, okay. That's good. That's good. Very good. Very good, Amina. Well done. Excellent job. These are weak pawns and white is better, yeah? So, yeah. Yeah, white is better for sure because, and also it is with it playing with the white pieces is very good in such positions. So he is ah. slowly exported any one against Peter Liko. Wow, wow! We have like uh, games of top Indian players that we are looking yeah. at first. Hari Krishna now with it, uh, and also in the chat we had Nimai Aniket official, official Om Hitendra handsome blunderer. Rudra Mehra, <laughs> JT, Vipul Kumar, and Kavnur Singh who found the answer. Well done, yes. Okay. Well done, well done. So, next one? Yeah. Oh, we have now Arjun, the birthday boy today. Oh, great. Yes, it's his uh, 19th birthday today. And let's give him a good birthday present by answering it correctly. Yeah. So, it is right to play. Arjun's move. What did Arjun play in the game? So the knight on c4 is under attack. You have a few options. You can take the bishop on d6. You can take the pawn on b5. You can also take the knight on f6. There are some options. Which one will you choose? Yeah. Okay, guys, you have to be quick. Oh, to, Prati, to... Pratiba has raised her hand. Yeah. Okay, Pratiba, let's go. Sir, Bishop into F6, if he takes the knight on C4, we can uh, just a Bishop into a Bishop, we can retreat the Bishop. You can retreat, Ah, but you can also take here. Sir, then Rook G1 comes. G8. Okay, then Bishop at 6 maybe. Okay. Yeah, so then the C4 pawn also okay. hangs. Should be better for white. Right, so yeah, Bishop F6 is the correct move. So uh, Bishop F6 is the correct move order. Well done, Pratibha. Uh, we can also take the Bishop on D6, but it should be done on the second move, not on the first move, right? So first Bishop F6, GF6. Now Arjun took the bishop on d6, queen into d6. And now can anyone guess the correct move? Have a quick guess. Oh, this one is not going to be easy for, the, for them. Let's see who, who answers this quickly. Okay. Raj, this time you have answered, you have raised your hand very quickly. So let's see, what's your move? G4. G4. Interesting. G4. Oh, he just learned uh, today to fix the double <laughs> isolated pawns. So he, he has right. gone for it. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. But every time we don't have to think in that way because there are a lot of other opportunities in the game. Right. So he had the pawn on D5 first of all hanging. So we have to do something of that. Mm, that is your So point. we have to take care of. So basically, we have to defend the pawn as well as make a very good move, which can be beneficial for us in the future. Right, so we can take one uh, one guess of uh, of someone, and then we can see the solution. Yeah, let's ask. Uh, yeah, so this move is not related to our topic actually. It's just a good move. Bhavik, you can give the answer. Uh, so I guess C four could be a good move. Uh, so because we're just fixing the pawn, and if he doesn't take B C four, uh, so then C four and D five are really strong. Like they're just fixing the B seven bishop. Hmm. Yeah, C4 is a very good alternative, uh, Bhavik. That's a good move. 
and then we can maybe after bc4 bishop c4 maybe play knight e2 and go for short castle and we can play positional chess right so that's a very good idea uh, but in the game he just went to long castle wow. so he evacuated the king from the e file and now we are also ready to play rook on check right we can uh, break his castle and we can start attacking so that's a good move by arjun but c4 is a good alternative as well all right so and then he won the game very quickly Let's hmm. move on to the next example. Do we have another exercise? So, oh. one last question that I wanted yeah. to ask here was: Isn't Long Castle a bit risky with his king like exposed? Like many of the players here might feel a little scared to Long Castle. Yeah, but also we have to see how many opponents' pieces can you know quickly attack our king. Here, Black doesn't have any pieces on the queen side, and his pieces on the queen side, are in fact, uh, kind of dead, right? The bishop on b7 is dead because of the pawn on d5. The knight on b8 can't move again because of the pawn on d5. So that's a huge problem for him. And also, if let's imagine if black moves the queen from d6 and tries to play d6 himself so that he can play knight d7 at some point, we can we can ourselves play d6 and try to create some huge attacking chances against black's king, right? Mm -hmm. On the e7 square and so on, like queen e3 check and so on. So there are a lot of opportunities like this. And yeah, basically black can't really get any attack on the queen side and we'll be faster because we can give you on check and so on nice okay got it uh, let's go to the next one but before that just to check if our chat did well uh and c4 was what many of them wanted to do and long castle was by swati and akshay so well done guys also, C4 was the correct move by all of these people. Okay. Right. And, you know, I just wanted to mention uh, an important thing here that, you know, C4 and Long Castle both looks very good options, right? So, people who come in time pressure spend a lot of time on such positions where we, we have to decide between two equivalent options. The main thing here is to play fast and avoid inaction because if you just don't move, you keep on thinking and try to figure out which is the best move, you are just going to lose time. And that is the only pitfall that you have to avoid in such type of decisions right play move uh, if you feel that long castle and c4 are both equally good you have to just decide on one move and you have to just go with it quickly right okay I'm going to the next one this time it's pragnananda's game and prag is white white to play guys What interesting positions uh, chosen by Swapnil here. Really enjoyable. And our chat is an amazing move. Guys, chat none, is also none, very fast. None of you should see the chat. Yeah. No, I hope uh, everyone's focused on this call. And we have hands up already. Let's ask uh, this time Nirnai. Maybe Nirnai has a very quick. Yes, sir. So I would play B5. So after that, we can we are breaking the b7 c6 chain, and either the c6 or b7 pawn will become an isolated pawn, which we can then attack from a half open files. Very good, then that's right. So everyone thought of b5 only. Yes. Well, yes. well, well done, well done, perfect. So b5 is the correct move, and also it uh, it increases the power of our f3 bishop, right, with this pawn break. So b5, well done. And of course, saying to b5, we're going to b5. Uh, and the b7 pawn is isolated and we are going to attack it with full force along the b file and uh, in the game he played knight e4 so can you find other good move after that after knight e4 what will you choose where will you move your queen mm -hmm. so guys all those who are now thinking how should white continue here white to play Okay, four players are ready with answers. Very good, very quick. Okay, shall we ask Karthik? Yeah. I'm thinking queen c4. Uh, but if I take think. with rook and f2? Then just removing the defender might work here. Uh, bishop e4. Yeah, yeah, bishop e4, queen e4, and uh, we are going to win. Uh, yes, good. Right? Yeah. So, and uh, if he plays rook a8, then we can just play b into c6. 
you can just uh, see this variation. So rook a8, we can take on c6, b6, and now rook d4, uh, forcing the knight from e4 to move away. And then we can win the c6 pawn. So white is clearly better, right? Uh, after queen c4, he played queen e6. How will you continue? Be quick. Not a tough one. It's time to win some material. Yeah, this is not so simple. Guys, fight to play. Also, doesn't have to be some huge material. Even if you manage to get a pawn with a good winning chances, that should be sufficient. Okay, Come on, see. Saga, time to win material. Yeah, it's very tough actually. I'm just trying to... I was trying thinking if, 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 if you would have said I would have played B6, fixing the pawns on B7 and C6. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe fixing is worse than winning the pawns. Yeah. <laughs> now, when we have to... when Like, if you can win the pawn, that's the best, right? Why yeah. to fix? That is true. But I don't want to go into a rook end game with four versus three. Like, you know, just. Yeah, yeah. So. That is understandable. So you have to just calculate a few variations, I think. You will get a point. Okay, let me see who, who in our team has already raised their hand. Only one, Bhavik and Nirai and Karthik. Okay. Interesting. Guys, have you found the answer completely? I think so, sir. Okay, brilliant. Yes, sir. It's not sure, but I think the answer. What if uh, to, this is your final round of uh, SGFI? And you, then you have to be sure, no? Otherwise, you can't come first. Karthik, are you sure? Um, yeah, I'm thinking, I'm sure. I'm cross checking when you say it's the final round. <laughs> okay, everyone is sure, but not sure. So, Apnil, you decide this time who answers. I think uh, I'll let Kolal answer. Let's see what Kolal says. Sir, uh, queen e6, rook e6, rook d8, mm -hmm. king at 7, uh, bishop e uh, Bishop rook, E5, Rook E5, Rook E4, uh, Rook E4, uh, Rook B8. Yeah, rook D8, King at is done. Rook B8 is it? Ah, rook B8, Rook B8, okay. Yeah, Rook B8 is possible, but Rook E7. Rook E7. We are not, uh, not winning a pawn immediately, no, after that. Yes, sir. Yeah, so that's a good try. Any, uh, okay, anyone else? Let, let's go with. Nirne. Sir, I think what the variation he said was right, except for the last move. Instead of rook b8, rook d7 should be played according to me. Okay, rook d7. If I defend the f7 pawn with something like king g6 or maybe f6, so let's then, say. So then b6, after that rook b7 is hanging and then we have a supported pass pawn. Yeah, so b6 is important. Yeah, very good. Mm -hmm. So by playing b6, uh, we managed to secure one pawn on the, on the b file and after winning the b7 pawn, the c6 pawn is weak and we have a very strong pass pawn on the uh b5 well done this b6 fixing mm, b6 is important oh. and and if you would have played cb then to take first and rook f7 yeah. yes sir rook f7 rook f7 and then you take here and then you take here so then you so we have four versus two and this should be easier nice nice yeah. oh well done guys well calculated okay um next one sopne yeah, so now uh, I think we have to move to the next segment now. Okay. Uh, so the next segment, so the, in the first segment, what we learned is how we can spoil our opponent's spawn structure, right? Mm -hmm. In the next segment, we'll all you will already have some weak spots, some weak pawns in your opponent's spawn structure, and you have to figure out ways to exploit uh, that weak those weak pawns, right? You have to start hitting those weak pawns, try to create a lot of pressure. Now there are usually two things that can happen when you pressurize weak pawns, when you attack weak pawns. The first thing is Opponent will be able to defend it, uh, if defend that weak pawn with his pieces. But uh, the drawback in this approach is that his pieces will be tied down to that weakness. And we can have an upper hand on the other side of the board. So we can have majority 
or uh, we can have a clear upper hand on the other side of the board. We can create some initiative on the other side of the board, right? Uh, in many cases, it is also possible that if you find a correct plan, opponent will not have sufficient firepower to defend the weak pawn and will win the weak pawn. And then we can slowly grind the end game after that. All right. So the main thing uh, in this segment you have to do is you have to figure out what are the weak pawns in your opponent's position and figure out a plan to attack those weak pawns with correct maneuvering and correct place, uh, piece placement. Okay. So first we'll see an example, uh, which is a game between Duda and Vidit. And I guess we can go to, I'll tell you the move number. Yeah, we can go to the, after after 29th move, it is white to play. Yeah. So here it is white to play. So what you have to do in this position is try to figure out which is the weak pawn in Black's camp and what, uh, what plan can you adopt in order to exploit that weak pawn, right? So it is white to play. Think for a couple of minutes, not an easy one because the move, the plan that Duda played is simply amazing. And which actually eliminated Vidit from the World Cup. This was a very important game. Yeah. Sagar always has a lot of stories to tell. I even remember like this uh, moment when I was commentating. And because Vidit, uh, if, he, if he had won this, he would have been very close to breaking into the candidates. Because this was oh. the quarterfinals already. Mm. So, also, he was playing well in the tournament. Yes. As far as I remember. So this uh, this moment and this game was also drawish, but eventually mm -hmm. Duda won. Right. Okay. So and uh, in this position, the first move is not sufficient. Uh, I would like to have the entire plan mm -hmm. as a solution. So this... so first step, try to figure out the weak pawn in Black's structure, and second step, formulate a good plan in order to hit that weak pawn. I think spotting the weak pawn is not so tough. Yeah. But hitting it is perhaps complex. Okay, whoever raises the hand first. Let's see. Okay, Bhavik has raised his hand already. Bhavik, do you want to answer? Or Sopnil should oh, we yeah. wait for others? Uh, just wait for a minute, then Bhavik can answer. Okay, let's see in the chat. Nimai Agarwal has given this full night circuit. Guys in the chat also try to tell the entire plan, not just one or two moves. All right, uh, Bhavik, you can answer. Uh, your mic is mute. Oh, so, so I'm not calculating the entire variation, but I think the main maneuver should be knight b3, knight c1, knight d3. And so if he doesn't go c5, then I have knight b4, and uh, then the a6 pawn is the weak pawn which we're attacking. And if he goes c5, then we have knight f4, so we're uh, adding pressure to the g6 pawn, and then we're going knight d5, knight c7 possibly, or so some other way to get it. Right, so you're saying the pawn on a6 is weak and you want to manual yes. the knight to b4, correct? Yes. Now whenever, yeah, one more thing I want to point out is that, uh, you know, you will, you will be able to spot the weak points, the weak pawns in opponent's position. And you can also think, okay, that maybe I have to attack this weak pawn. But in most of the cases, there will be two or three ways to do the same thing, right? So you have to also find the uh, optimum way of doing it, right? So your idea of knight b4 is correct, but it is not the best way to manual the knight to b4, all right? But uh, well done. Uh, what about Nirna? So I think a better maneuver will be knight e4 check, knight f2, knight d3. And so yeah, after right. that, the same plan is knight f4, knight b4. Most likely knight b4, knight a6. But if he plays c5, then knight f4, uh, gaining advantage over the d5 square. Right. So this is a slightly better maneuver because knight e4 comes with a check. So we maybe save a move here, right? So well done, well done, guys. So the idea is to put the knight on b4. So white played knight e4, in g7, knight f2, and the knight goes to b4. Uh, rook f8 check, we can quickly go over a few moves and then, okay, I think we can just go over a few moves and uh, also see the 
a very good idea by Tuda in the end, towards the end. So and King H1. Yeah. Rook A1 is a very good move, a very good prophylactic move because you want to take on A6 at the same time not allow black to play Rook A2. So, Sagar, you want them to guess here? No, no. I was just being careful that if I should not... <laughs> should... I think we can just uh, tell the move because it's not related to the topic. Yeah. So here Duda played knight into b4 and the pawn simply quaint. And he also calculated that he is going to checkmate with his queen and rook because he's the first one to deliver a check. Mm. And the king is too exposed in spite of Vidit having three extra pawns. Doesn't help me. Yeah. So this was a beautiful game by Duda. Uh, so again, uh, so what we can learn from this example is that first of all, you have to develop this eyesight of spotting weak pawns in opponent's position. The second thing is you should try to formulate a plan of hitting that weak pawn and remember that there could be two or three ways to do the same thing, to achieve the same aim, right? So you have to try to figure out the most uh, the, the most efficient way to attack that weak pawn. All right, so here we already have exercises coming up. Oh. All the best. And this time it's not Indian players. <laughs> this time it's change, yes. from all over the world. Okay, the first one. White to play. And also when you tell them, try to calculate a few variations. Because uh, at first it could be obvious, but it's better if you are also if you also follow it up with good calculations. So what did Swapnil say? Please remember, he first said spot the weakness and then find a way to hit it. Well done Aditya Jain in the chat. Okay, we have few people who have raised their hands, two of them, three, four, five. Will, will we ever be able to get eight hands up? We'll, we have to do that. That would be the ideal scenario. Yeah, I hope that to, happens. We have to do that one today. Okay, Shubhi, let's try what answer Shubhi would like to get. Sir, the F7 pawn is uh, weak here. And I think that uh, we should try to attack it uh, with knight g5. Well done, Shubhi. That's the correct answer. Uh, the other way, I think a few people suggested in the chat is rook e a2. Right, mm -hmm. that is another way. Maybe that is also a completely fine move. But uh, when I analyzed this position, at g5 was the best way to do that. One reason could be that after we win the pawn on f7, the e6 pawn is also weak. So we yes. should have a rook on e2, so, so that we can win the pawn straight away. Right, so at g5, uh, black plays rook at six. We take the pawn on f7, rook into f6. And now, where does the knight go? Should we? Capture the e6 pawn. Hmm? Oh. But mm -hmm. you want to capture the e6 pawn. Okay. <laughs> but uh, rook takes f7. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, rook takes f7. Let's go. So directly knight d8 and then directly uh, rook knight. Uh. Knight e6. Okay, that is a possibility. But uh, the other good way to do the uh, other good way to play is knight e5, which is what we played in the game. And after knight e5, uh, basically the rook is tapped. So black is supposed to play rook d2. Uh, we take on d2, c into d2, and the d2 pawn is the newly created target. So we play rook d1, hitting the pawn straight away. Bishop goes to b4, and we play knight f3, creating a double attack. Uh, we win one of the pawns for sure, and uh, 
we also have a good knight. So let's say if we win the pawn on d2, we can place a knight on e4, which is very safe over there. And then we can start advancing our inside pawns, right? H4, G4, and so on. So this is winning endgame for white. Wow. Very nice. So well done, show me well done. So knight g4 is the correct idea. So the weakness was f7 in this case. Let's move on to the next exercise. Yeah. Again, from the game of with it. With it, okay. White to play. What should be the best condition for white? Okay, this one is very tricky. First, we have to find a weakness. And then we have to attack it. <laughs> I think everyone... Mm, can figure out what is the weakest point in black spawn structure, right? Now the next step is formulating yeah. good plan to exploit it. We are getting correct answers in the chat as well. Well done. Wow. Fantastic, guys. So, Apnil is looking at the chat as well. So, if you are writing the answer, he will be spotting it. Okay. And we have four hands up, hands stressed. Five, five. Great. We are getting closer. Yeah, slowly everyone's getting into the groove as the day progresses so let's ask uh, pratibha maybe yeah sir here the weakness is the g6 pawn all right so how can you try to hit that weakness what should be your plan sir rook g6 Rook G6, but the king is on F7, right? Sir, Rook G. Sir, Bishop G5. Oh, Bishop. Bishop G5. Okay. Yeah, that is one idea. So, what do you want to do after that? Sir, after that, uh, Rook C7, when the king moves, we can move uh, Rook G7. Right, right. But I think uh, by moving the Bishop away, we also lose the B6 pawn, right? That is another problem. So, what should be the correct square for the Bishop? Kunal, what do you think? Sir, Bishop D4. Bishop D4, what is the idea? Yes, sir. Idea of uh, Rook C2 uh, and following by Rook G2 and G6 pawn is falling. Okay, you mean Rook C7 and Rook G7. Okay, that is one yes. possibility. Right. So, Bishop D4 is the right move, but what is the second correct move? Uh, Bhavik, second correct uh, move. So, it will be Rook F6, answer if King G7, then Rook F5, Rook F5. Otherwise, King E7, Rook G6 is there. Right. So that's the straightforward way to win the pawn on G6. Well done. So Bishop D4 is the correct way to bring the Bishop into play. Yes. Right. So, me. but but black uh, black uh, puts a trap. He plays Rook B1. What do you do? Ooh. Of course, win the pawn. Yeah. Just Rook F6, King E7, Rook G6. Pre move. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, pre pawn, right? Uh, yeah, Nirna will come to you. Uh, Amina, I can go rook f6 check, king e7, and rook takes g6. I'll be pawn up, right? Yes, sir. Yes? Rook e1. Rook e1, I'll move my king. Just move it away somewhere. <laughs> she's she's also very smart yeah she's not saying it's a mate she's asking me where okay very cool very alert well done amina yeah so first we have to play uh king e3 getting away from the mating net and now we are ready to win the pawn with rook f6 and rook g6 well done guys well done okay. so this is hanging. Yeah. time to move on to the next position the next one could be slightly tricky i believe but let's see how many of you can solve it correctly it is black to play okay 
okay i'll get that up till that time nirna do you did you have any question or uh yes sir so in yeah. the original position uh why can't we play rook c7 instead of bishop d4 instead of uh, this yeah but the king a6 what's the plan Sir, sorry, sure. King e6. Yes, sir. So on King e6, we uh, if we just go Rook g7. Rook g7. Okay, so we can't. I can't take it. Over. Okay. And King f6. I want to go Bishop. So rook a7. Yeah. Yeah. So what about Rook b1 now? So Bishop b1. 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 Oh, no, sorry. Uh, maybe F3 or F4? F3 yeah, then you F3. create some problems. Now. Like if you can win the pawn on G6 without any tension, then it's better to do that, right? Yes, sir. But uh, we also have B7 ideas. Uh, where? Here? No, sir. After B F3. After F3. But a little bit to check now. So King F1? King F1. Again, I can give you check twice or thrice and then take on f3 that is one possibility i can play rook b3 that is another possibility so rook b3 uh, f, uh b7 b7 yeah okay. okay so i can't take it now okay so what's the threat i believe bishop f4 yes sir okay i can play bishop c3 for a move is that possible so rook g6 rook b6 um, okay, so this is the way you're getting it. Okay, right, right. So, what I have to do, I can't play rook b3 for sure. And let's say if I win the pawn on f3, what do, maybe I can give one check. Yes, yeah? so rook b1 check has to be played, I believe. So, king g2, yeah, then again, I check on b2, bishop f2, bishop f2, mm. e3. Oh, yeah, sorry, sir. Bishop F2. King S3 or to play? Yes, sir. King S3, now I take on F3. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. E7, all right. Can I defend it now? But now you anyway can't go Bishop. Uh, you can go maybe. Yeah, that is the two king g2. So, how about uh, bishop d8? Is that a possibility for me? Sir, rook g6 and rook b6? Uh, no, bishop is still on d8, so it's not coming. No, sir, I'm fine. Bishop f6 is, I was thinking, but I think bishop f6 is rook f6 at least. Yes. So, I'll play something like king d7. So rook b6. Rook b6 still. Oh, nice. But rook into b6 and bishop c7. So bishop a7. Yes, yeah, bishop a7. Bishop a7. Yeah, I have to play f2, but then king g2 is there. Mm. Bishop g3. So you have a red color pawn, so I think we'll win this game. Yes, mm. Yeah, so this should be winning. Mm. Quite possible, quite possible. But I just feel that Bishop D4 is more easier, no? Because yes, like, simpler. We, can, we can avoid all these tactics. All right, Thank you, let's move on to the next question. Anton Guyaro versus... The next one. Uh, that's. I thought one. it was... Donchenko game. Ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Seul versus Donchenko. Black to play. Black to play. Again, the process is the same. You have to figure out the weakness in white's position and then formulate a correct plan to exploit it. Very interesting. Let's see. Oh, already two hands up. Wow. In the chat, everyone's giving the wrong answer.
you know Swapnil so if I say that then they all give something else you know? have to trick the chat <laughs> In the chat also, I can see. No, no. Everyone right was giving the right answer, but then I said they are giving wrong answer, so everyone else will start right. Otherwise, everyone would then look at, oh, what's the right answer, and then start yeah. typing that. Okay. Um, Karthik, Karthik, what's your move? Yeah. So I'm thinking the weakness is G3 here, yeah? mm. and uh, the way we explore it, it is Queen F3. Problem for white is he can't take. Very and, good, very uh, good. That's right. And if he moves the queen to e1. Queen e1. Uh, I'm just thinking if we can already take g3, rook g3. Yeah, that's right. Very good. So queen e1, we can take rook g3, and black is just winning, right? So one very good exchange of her, queen f3, and it is game over for white. Amazing. Let's move on to the next position. Did you Let's... all think queen f3 only? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well done. Well done, everyone. Yes. And also, right, so the next one should also be easy, I believe. In the chat, many of you said queen f3. So yeah. well done, guys. I was just uh, playing around. Uh, yeah. Now, this one. White, white to, to play. play. Figure out the weak pawn, try to attack it. Like for example, e6 is weak, b6 is weak. You need to think. So like Sara Mehnat. <laughs> but maybe, maybe guys, never trust anyone. I think they ignored your suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> they are ready with the answer. I think Nirnai generally follows what like someone saying, yeah, elders you should respect. But uh let's ask this time Raj. Should we ask Raj? Yeah, yeah. Queen F three. Mm, queen f3 okay if knight into h4 then queen into then queen g3 at uh, queen h3 queen h3 why did you play queen f3 in the first place to uh take uh h5 pawn but so then why this yeah queen h5 actually i was imagining a knight uh, g3 check yeah Okay. okay, so okay. yeah, when h you have to take, and then if black will try rook a7. Yeah. Yeah. What should, how should white continue now? We can move the king to uh, G, G1. Yeah, yeah. So when opponent gives some scary threats like this, one thing is to find defensive ideas. But the other thing is to be aggressive. Yeah. So what aggressive ideas do we have in this position instead of uh, king G1? Give your own threats. Queen, yeah. Checks. Uh, queen G4 check and queen uh, E8. Right, so queen e8 check, correct. Queen f8, bishop e6 check, win the pawn. King goes to g7. And when the king goes to g7, automatically he doesn't have rook h7 anymore. Okay. Then you yes. can bring the queen back to h5. And white is a clear pawn up uh, with a winning endgame. All right, so we have won both the pawns, the h5 pawn as well as the e6 pawn in this variation. Yes. And uh, in the game, instead of uh, knight into h4, he played rook a7. Uh, white took the pawn on h5. Second, uh, oh, sorry, we can go to that variation quickly. Queen f3, rook a7. Yeah, rook a7, queen h5, rook g7. And now what should be the correct move for white? Just one move. Mm -hmm. Guys, what's the right move here? Okay. Already I can see five. Oh. 
six very good six pratiba are you able to see the screen or is it uh, shifting all the time sir no sir i am able to see it. Okay, so Sagar can pick. Yeah, maybe uh, Nirnai was very quick here. Maybe you want to go? Yes, sir. So I would like to click Queen G4. Queen G4 attacking the A6 pawn. Yes. Right. It's a it's a fine possibility. But anything else? So I was also thinking about Queen so, F5. Okay, so basically you're trying to win something on the king side, right? That is one yes, possibility for sure. This is also a good idea. But is there something else that we can do? Instead of winning the pawns, we can also activate one of our piece. Yeah, should be. The rook is controlling the a file as uh, when the rook was on a7, it was controlling and now it left, so rook a1. Mm, okay. Nice. So that's a good idea. Uh, that's what I played in the game. Doesn't mean that queen f4, queen g4 is bad, but rook a1 is just more stronger because we bring another piece in the attack. So rook a1, knight f8, and rook a8, when all white spaces are placed aggressively, and black skin is going to suffer for a lot of moves. So white has a winning advantage, right? Well done. Let's move on to the next uh, example. This one could be slightly tricky. So let's see how many of you can solve it correctly. And it is from the game of the tactical magician Mikhail Tan. Right, so white to play. How should white continue? Again, follow the process, spot the weaknesses first, and then figure out a correct way to exploit it. So you guys all know how Mikhail Tal used to play. He used to sacrifice pieces. So think about how you can sacrifice all the material here for an attack. No, just try to check mate black king. Yes, uh, Nirnai, Bhavik, Kunal, did you, uh, Shubhi, did you all find checkmate? No one's interested to listen to me. Yeah? Everyone's like, you're trying to counterbalance my, all my hard work for content, Sagar. <laughs> not for content. <laughs> I'm just trying to make them learn the art of not listening to anyone, yeah, to believe in themselves, but maybe. All right, we can ask someone, Saga. Yeah, we can go ahead. Uh, Bhavik, you want to give it a try? Uh, so, sir, I'm actually influenced a bit by Sagar's so aggressive play right now. So, I'm thinking of going g4 with the idea of mm. g5, knight d7 check, knight c4, and then knight b6 is made. Wow, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's, how, that's how a session of positional chess turns into attacking chess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's, uh, see, in this position, white is clearly dominating because black pieces are uncoordinated right so we can play a lot of moves and we can still retain a healthy advantage but here white is a direct way to uh, exploit the weaknesses already present in the position which in fact al went for he didn't uh, go for check in this position so he also plays according to the position right uh, so what is the weakness first of all bhavik in this position for black uh so the weakness is so i guess the king is one weakness so it's kind yeah. of over here and so it's cut off with the rook on c1 all right. We are also looking at with some weak pawns in this session. And so what are weak pawns? So, so the weak pawns are so F7 is a weak pawn. Yeah, so. F7 is a weak pawn. Any other pawn? So A5 is a weak pawn. Why is it a weak pawn? So because there's no pawn supporting it. So And also it's fixed, right? It can't move ahead. Yes. And also it's so, fixed. Yeah. So in endgame, such pawn can become a weakness, right? Yes. So try to concentrate your efforts on that weak pawn on A5 and try to figure out a direct way so that we can increase the pressure tremendously on that pawn. Okay, Nirna, you're ready with the answer? Yes, sir. Sir, I, I think that Sagar sir, is trying to trick us, sir, uh, in this style play Always. traditionally. And uh, I think the most would be knight b7. If king b7, okay. then knight b3 uh, and rook c5. Sorry, rook c5 and knight b3, either way. Uh, and if rook b7, then rook c5 and uh, rook a7, knight b3. Either way, we just uh, plan to attack the a5 pawn and uh, it can't be uh, protected. It will die. 
right 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 so try to be as the right idea it's a direct way basically white can play other stuff like what uh, bhavik said g4 g5 that is a possibility as well we are just controlling the game uh but knight b7 is a direct way to win a pawn so knight into b7 king into b7 rook into c rook c5 a uh, very good move first of all we have to activate the rook before bringing the knight to c4 uh he plays knight d7 uh we have to maintain the rook on the fifth rank rook b5 check king c8 knight c4 and the poor a5 pawn is lost right so again we uh attack the weakness in this position if so uh, do we have time sagar for the uh, next segment can or we go knight c4 in the starting condition and then uh, then uh, g4 g5 trying the same idea that uh, yeah yeah so we can uh, play it other way as well we can play knight c4 uh, maybe black will play bishop c6 we can play knight d5 as also activating the knight black will play some like bishop e8 and we can now now play b3 defending the a4 pawn so that our knight on c5 is free to move right but again we are we are just maintaining the pressure we are not won anything yet and it will take us some time to win some material right uh, because uh, it will be difficult for us to target the a5 pawn now because uh, it's difficult to coordinate our pieces against the pawn on a5 right so knight on base knight takes position was a very direct way to go for the pawn on uh, a5 so that's why it's practically more so more strong even the chat was very keen on going for knight c4 lot of people uh but knight b7 very few but actually this was a very hidden kind of a thing that the a5 pawn was the weakness to aim for. yeah so that's what uh with this session that's uh, my main aim that you know you have to have a very uh very good eye for such weaknesses it might seem you know, like simply uh not that great that a5 pawn is not such a huge weakness you might feel like that but uh, that fix, those fixed pawns in the end game is are always a target for our pieces as we saw in the game between andrekin and nihal seren right he played a5 a4 a3 he didn't know how is he is going to exploit that but at some point he will get chances to exploit such weaknesses right so swapnil was asking if we have time to continue so i'll ask you guys would you like to continue the session or are you guys tired uh no sir i would like to continue okay. fine yes, to continue sir. yes i yes, want to continue okay no one's hungry yeah <laughs> hungry for knowledge okay uh which one should we look at so okay. uh so in the next segment is uh, improving your pawn structure right so we looked at how we can first of all we recognize different types of big pawns then we uh, we Uh, figured out ways to spoil our opponent's pawn structure the next one was hitting our opponent's pawn weaknesses already present in the position and now we are going to look at how we can improve our own pawn weaknesses right so that is also very important part because let's say you in the opening uh, as we discussed there were a few openings where we accepted pawn weaknesses right at the start right so there could be situations like this where you accept a pawn weakness in the middle game or even the opening straight away and there will be a time where you will have to release that pawn weakness so you have to have a very keen eye for this one as well because if you are able to remove your pawn weakness maybe you will equalize the game or in some cases you might also get an advantage so let's start with an illustrated example and the most important thing that you can do in order to rectify your pawn structure is pawn break sometimes when you can use exchanges okay so keep a keen eye for pawn breaks and exchanges so in the first example <clears throat> in the first example we can go to uh move number uh, 17 maybe yeah let us black to play what should black do first of all figure out what is the weakness in your own position right it is black to play you are uh, playing with the black pieces i i think by now uh, it should be very obvious to you what is the weak point in black position and you have to figure out a correct continuation to eliminate that weakness not an easy one the usually the illustrative examples are a bit tough but you can give it a try think for a couple of minutes before we say the solution yeah also in the chat guys try to think what do you do here Okay. 
Karthik, only one. Yeah, this one is tricky. Okay, let's go with him. Karthik, would you like to answer? Yeah, sure. So, in a way, white has a bind on d5. So, uh, d5 is a weak square for black. So, I was thinking bishop c4, uh, trying to exchange pieces. Okay, so bishop c4, knight into c4, queen into c4, queen c4, rook c4, and now white plays bishop e1. So, you maintain because you want to play d5 next, right? So, I want to play bishop right, e1 yeah. and maintain that bind on d5. So this is uh, the correct answer till now, but now what should be the correct move for black? This is a critical position. Maybe rook d4. Rook d4, okay. But after rook d4, knight e2, uh, you end up having weak pawns now. Right, because yeah. d4 pawn is also very tough to defend, I think. I think rook d4 is uh, not, a, not an ideal. Very patient. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So here, uh, anyone can can anyone tell me what's the card? Am is ready with the move? Let's go to him. So I would play d5. If I want to play, but isn't it a sacrifice? Uh, sacrifice of a pawn because if I take a d5, what will so you do? So I think uh, we get it back immediately after rook d4. After rook d4, okay. Rook d4, bishop f2. Now you don't get it back. Same stuff. Yeah, rook d1, rook d1. So rook okay. d1, rook d1, bishop b4. Bishop b4, okay. Knight e4. Tricky because if you take with the knight, that is c4. You lose material, and if you take with the rook, then knight f6. So, this is important. Yeah, so slightly you have to improvise somewhere. So, d5 is actually the correct move because if you play, don't play d5 here, he's going to have a uh, permanent bind on the d5 square, right? And it's going to be clearly better. So, d5 has to be the correct move, but you have to make it work. So, d5 e into d4, what is the correct move for black now? So, so bishop b4. Can we? Yeah, bishop b4, that's the right move. So we have to play bishop b4 immediately, betting to exchange on c3, and then we can also win the pawn on b5, right? So this is how exactly black played in this game. And it was very important to start with bishop c4. First of all, exchanging this knight on e3, as Karthik said. Then after the exchanges on c4, so we eliminate one knight. Then uh, after the exchanges on c4, after bishop e1, the critical move is to play d5. E into d5 is forced, and then we can play bishop b4. All right? And uh, after that, white played h3. He can't do much. After h3, it was bishop c3, bishop into c3, rook into d5, takes, takes everything. And after bishop if I rook c2, it is equal material. Right? So always look out for such pawn breaks, which eliminates your own weaknesses, right? Uh, the only thing is that in such scenarios, you'll have to calculate it accurately because if you take a wrong pawn break, it might backfire for you. So you have to be careful with your calculations. So uh, this game, this uh, illustrative example also uh, taught us how we can use exchanges because we played bishop c4 first, right? How we can use exchanges as well as pawn breaks to eliminate our weaknesses. In the next example, we will see how Carlson himself used ex exchanges to rectify his pawn structure. Yeah. So I think we can go to uh, move number 30, after move number 31. Mm -hmm. This one should be easy for everyone. Be quick. Move number after, oh. after 97, 31st. Yeah. So here it is white to play. What should white do? Okay, already a lot of hands yeah, raised. So many people. Pratibha, what do you think is the correct move here? Sir, knight d5. If he takes the knight, we can take c into d5, clearing our double pawn. If we didn't take, we can take. 
we can take the b6 pawn also black's knight is under attack right so yes, bishop sir. c5 is also a threat here so knight d5 is a good move which forces a favorable exchange for white and by this exchange we can rectify our pawn structure very well done so knight into d5 uh, c into d5 uh, and what's the weakness in black's pawn structure pratiba what do you think Said the b6 pawn. The b6 pawn is weak, right? It's a backward pawn. It's also on the open file, so we can pressure as it till the end. And uh, Carlson slowly grinded this end game into a win against Sovisky. Well done. Mm -hmm. Now let's see the final example of this segment that is uh, preventing opponent from ruining our pawn structure. So we also have to think prophylactically in many cases because opponent has some devilish ideas of weakening your pawn structure. So there could be some obvious move for you. But uh, you have to be careful whether uh, it allows your opponent to pick on your pawn structure. Okay, so here it is white to play. I believe uh, it's it's a very obvious move for white here. But tell me whether you will go for that move or not. What should white do? If not, what should white do? Oops, sorry. No, it is white to play. Mm -hmm. Quite a tricky one here because guys, you have to un. Try to think what is the best move for white here. How it is ready with the move? Is ready. Let's think for a minute. Okay, Bhavik, can you tell the answer? Oh, so, so taking bishop c4 directly is wrong because you can just go d5, damaging the structure. Uh, so, so that is why uh, instead of bishop c4, so we can go e5 first and then take bishop c4. Very good. That's the right idea. Right. So, bishop c4 is very logical move in this position. Maybe in the blitz, we'll just play bishop c4 straight away, right? But uh, d5 is a very strong move for black that damages our post structure. And after Let's say a into d5, knight into d5. We have an, we get an isolated pawn on d4 square. Also, our king becomes a bit exposed, so we don't want that. So we first play e5, I'm maintaining a healthy pawn structure, and after knight d5, uh, e5, knight d5, bishop c4, the position remains balanced. But our pawn structure on the king side is healthy, right? So you have to also think prophylactically in order to prevent our opponent from ruining our own pawn structure. Okay. So three things we learned in this segment. The first thing was uh, using exchange, uh, using pawn breaks to eliminate our pawn weaknesses. The second was using exchanges, as we saw in the game of Carlson. He played knight d5 and rectified his pawn structure. And in this uh, game, again of Carlson, Carlson with the white pieces, he played prophylactically. He played first e5 and not only black to play d5. And this is going to be a last test of today's session. So be uh, careful, do your best. Nirna, you want to add something? Uh, sir, I just wanted to ask in the last position, is one d5 also possible? Uh, first more d5, yeah. Uh, d5 actually gives him some opportunities maybe to play bishop a6, defend the pawn. Maybe d5 is fine, not a bad, doesn't look like a bad move. But something like bishop a6 and he will have to work harder maybe to gain that pawn back. Okay. Sir. So maybe practically I will e5 slightly better in that sense. We get the pawn immediately, we play knight e2 and castle. Right? Okay. So it's time for test. It is white to play in the next position. What should white do? This is between a very famous player as white and a very young and upcoming talent with black. So it is Anish Giri white and Nodirbek Abdusatarov with black. Is this the Olympiad game, sir? Last round? No. This oh. is the Pede World Cup game, 2021. Oh, okay. White to play. So guys, think about your pawn structure. Think what is weak and try to improve it. Like for example, where is your weakness? There are some easy exercises in the segment. Some are tough. This one I think is one of the tough ones. But try to figure out what is the weak point in your own pawn structure and how you can eliminate it. Or you can also think prophylactically. It's up to you. Find the best moves. Okay. Four players are ready.
Maybe uh, this time we'll go with Kunal. Yeah. Sir, knight d2, uh, idea and other b4, so knight t4 and c4, c5, yes. C5 square is where you have to go. Yes. a possibility. Hai. But I uh, tell you that if you look at your structure, then which is the weakness? In your pawn structure. Mein? A3. A3, A3 weak. weak. Yes. D4 weak. Hai. D4 weak? Why weak? Hai? Mm, D4 because no pawn defense. Yeah, or backward pawn be right? Yes. So let's say kabhi future mein, if uh, black gets a chance, he can play something like you know, he'll castle and he'll bring the rook to d8, and the d4 pan, uh, pawn can become a target for his pieces, right? In the future, yes, right. Yes. So we should try to what we can try to do with that. Kya kar sakte usko? Eliminate kar sakte kya kaise? Yes, d5, d5, very good. So Hello, d5 important move key. Yes. Uh, a d5 important move because hai kyunki black will like to play knight e7 immediately and put his knight on d5 right and if black manages to do that the pawn on d5 is like backward forever right he also has a passed pawn on c4 he'll play b5 and that's kind of a protected passed pawn so knight d2 is a fine idea but uh, the, the move which giri played in the game d5 is much better right so we'll go for d5 Okay, so d5 and a d5 queen d5 and white is slightly better because of active pieces right also by playing d5 we activate our b2 bishop yes and sir. next that is c4 pawn is under attack next we can play bishop e2 we can castle and black king is still a problem is still in the center yes sir. right so let's go to the next position next one is also a bit tricky but i think you should be able to solve it quickly it is black to play and it is from the game of Magnus Carlsen playing with the black pieces. What should black do? Yeah, black to play, guys. Try to think what would you do here? Harik has already found it. Who else? Amina, do you want to answer? Sir, I'm thinking. Hey, Raj, you want to answer? Hello? Yeah, Raj, yeah. what will you play? Yeah, H5. Because H5 H6 you want to play. H6 yeah, pawn is weak, right? Uh, okay, yes, first of all, tell me uh, what are the weaknesses in your portion? What are the weak pawns? How many pawns are we? H6, H6, F6. Then also a5 poison is also loose. But uh, um, there's another pawn. D6. D6 also D6. can get. Uh, yeah, D6 can also get under attack. So we basically have four pawns to take care of, right? So H5 yes. is a possibility. H5 is a possibility. But uh, tell me one thing. Whether you can play H5 on the next move also. Can you stop H5? No, uh, you can't stop cannot. H5. White cannot. So, yeah. so that we have that liberty to play H5 on the next move, right? But uh, yes. A5 pawn we cannot uh, eliminate because the knight is sitting in front of it, right? Yes. We can't play F5 because the pawn on G4, E4 is there. Yes. Right. So can uh, we have the option to play D5 right now? But can you stop D5? Yes, we can stop on next move. D5. How how can you stop D5? Uh, on next move, we can stop not right now. After that, we can. Uh, now, let's say if it is white to play and I want to stop d5. So I'm coming. What will I do? I can play uh, bishop c4. Okay. And Anything else? Uh, c4 also. c4 is also there, right? So c4 is a problem for us because if I play c4, you're not getting d5. You can play h5 also. It's not a problem. But after h5, I'll play c4 only, maybe. 
and uh, even if we eliminate that h6 pawn it's not such a big problem because you know if you want to compare between different weak pawns in your position first of all try to observe which is the weak pawn which is situated on an open file okay here the d6 pawn is situated on the open file on d file right that six pawn is the h file is blocked so it will be really tough for your opponent to attack that pawn right you can easily defend it with king g7 and so on right uh, so that's why we should try to eliminate the weakness which is on the open file first that should be our priority so we should try to play deeper uh Bhavik, you want to add something uh, no sir sir my point was d5 only so uh i'm so uh, so h6 right now so basically it's not an open file uh with h6 so it doesn't really matter if uh, you don't save at six and it's really like it takes a lot of time for white to attack at six so if you go like knight b2 knight d1 knight d3 knight f5 and then you can also take otherwise if he goes rook g1 rook g3 rook h3 you can always go king g7 so, right right so yeah that so this is how you compare is, between different weaknesses so let's say if you have multiple weaknesses pawn weaknesses in your position try to uh, prioritize the one which is already situated on an open file right yes. and also the one which opponent can prevent uh, from eliminating so here he wants to play c4 you have to go d5 immediately this is the right time yeah and magnus played d5 yeah so d5 and uh, the plus point that we have as black in this position uh, apart from the different pawn weaknesses the plus point is of course that we have the bishop pair yes so magnus went on to exploit this bishop pair beautifully and he won the game all right so d5 is the correct move. well done everyone was on d5 Okay, let's move on to the next one. I believe the next one should not be so tough for everyone. So be quick. It is white to play. What should white do? White should, uh, white's knight is hanging. So white should definitely think about moving the knight. Like, you know, he wants to take and spoil the structure. So think about where you can move the knight. And... I'll try to sacrifice the knight in tall like <laughs> inspiration. You know, now they, some people do get influenced by me and will come up with knight takes e5, t e5, rook e5, <laughs> two pawns for a piece. In fact, three pawns, no? because we are already pawn up. We are already pawn up, right. So guys, think, the players who are playing, Navara is a very creative player, loves to attack. So, and his opponent is Durar Bailey Wasif. He's also a good player, very strong player. Let's ask Bhavik. He's easy to convince so, such ideas. Yeah. Okay, sir. So, if you want to be a bit more creative, sir, let's go with D4, sir. And after d4, sir, bishop f3, gf3, we are taking, uh, like, we're giving the double pawn, sir. Uh, but, sir, when we're exploiting that, sir, we can always go king h1, rook g1, and there's, like, king side attack possibilities. So, <laughs> if you want to go with uh, Sagar, sir's ideology, you can do no, it. No, I, what about my ideology? You, you, what about your ideology? What would you do here? So, I guess that is a possibility. You would play d4 in your game? I so he's interested in d4. That is a possibility for sure. But after bishop f3, gf3, maybe e into d4, I'll put my bishop on f6. And you know, this king side pawn structure, uh, the double isolated pawns on f2 and f3 is uh, not very attractive, to put it mildly. Yes. Right, right. So, okay, anyone else? Nirne? Uh, sir, I think that I would simply play rook e3. Our pawn structure is not that great, so you I saw think the we should prevent it. Happened on the board. Yes, sir, but I had uh, thought of you, it beforehand. Sure, already. yeah. You you are not going for a crazy attack. So, my also move. I'm looking for. Okay. So, at first, I thought that I might be missing something because rookie three just seems like a simple move, like play it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rookie three actually it also seems like a weird move because the bishop is on d2 and you play rookie three, but that is kind of the only move right, to prevent our uh, pawn structure from uh, ruining. Uh, but also the main point is that we are already a pawn up on the queen side, right? So we don't need to have something, do something really extraordinary, like uh, you know some uh, taking some initiative like d4. We can play calmly on the king side and we can try to exploit our extra pawn on the queen side. So rookie three is the correct. Uh, so did rook e3, f5, knight e5, d5, d6, d7 happen in the game by any chance? I think he didn't play rook e3 itself. He played something else and he got a minus position. Oh, okay, so <laughs> he, he played d4, Bavik, and he lost the game. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next one. White okay, to play. White to play. Sir, 
so think about how the king on g8 is so we can how you can finish him off Pratiba, are you there? Yes, sir. Ah, okay. What would you do here? Sir, here E for honesty. Okay, but what black wants to do next? He wants if attacked by knight f6 yeah, but the knight on g5 is also hanging no if you place knight f6 okay you have to pick, pick on this one very yeah. easy let's go uh let's ask uh this time raj Uh, yes, black wants to take bishop on f3 and ruin our pawn structure. So we can eliminate that uh, knight by just bishop into g5. Right. Simple one, right? The knight f3 is a threat and it's very tough to uh, play anything else to prevent that threat. So bishop g5 has to be played. Well done. I think everyone pawned bishop g5 on the correct. Really right. Nice. So uh, it, it also feels a bit odd to give up that bishop on e3, but it's very important to not allow black to play knight f3. So uh, to uh, make a call on this one. So bishop g5 and white is in fact slightly better after bishop g5 because the t6 pawn is a huge weakness. You can play rook d1, knight b5 and so on and try to hint at weakness. So white is better. All right. Uh, so so uh, position if f5 comes at some point, won't it be dangerous for like white? Uh, yeah, so black has also his counter chance, right? He will try to create counter chances with f5 and he has to do that. Otherwise, uh, he's simply minus, right? Because the d6 pawn. But white has, I think, uh, sufficient resources to manage that counter play. But that is how I think the game will, game will go. Black will try to prepare f5 and white has to deal with that. And if white deals with it successfully, he has a long-term advantage of uh, the weakness on d6. Yes, yeah, sir. All right. So let's move on to the mm -hmm. final exercise of today's session. Oh. So, guys. It is black to play. Think about how the back rank is weak. and Oh, it's black to play. Sorry. Black. <laughs> What will you tell as black, Sagar? As black, the king on d2 is slightly exposed and, you know, we can try and turn, use our rooks to attack. Guys, I want all of you to give an answer on this one. Even if it's wrong, it's okay. Yeah. Just you can try it. Yeah, everyone should raise the hand. Maybe if, if you haven't used this feature, you should click on it. I think there's a raise hand button. Okay, Nirnay has already raised his hand, so he's found the answer. Okay, we'll wait. Uh, Kunal has found it. Okay, Bhavik has found it. Also, Karthik has found it. Remember how we learned about exchange sacrifices today, how to attack, how to... I hope you guys learned. So six people, okay, Raj has also. What about Amina and Pratibha? I'm waiting for you guys. Yes, we had... Pratibha, did you raise your hand? Yes, sir. Okay, fantastic. And yeah. now Amina also. Amina, you have to make a move. Yeah, any anything. Start with Amina. We have to start with Amina. Yeah. Amina, you can also sacrifice your bishop. Bishop takes b5 if you want to. It's a interesting. Like you open the files, then rook d8. No? Would you like to? Am Am Amina, can you hear us? Yeah. Sir, rook d8. Rook d8, you want to play. Rook okay. d8 is Amina's move. Okay. 
and she wants to create this discovered check idea okay inspired uh, by shagar <laughs> no not it this is just uh, uh, amina are you uh, did i tell that's why you said this move or it's just your thinking it's just i'm thinking your thinking okay uh what about uh, pratibha Sir, hmm? sir, A5. A5. Pratibha is uh, playing a move, pawn move on the side of the board. A5. Okay. Uh, what else? Uh, let's go with uh, Raj. Kunal. Okay, Kunal. Sorry. A5. A5. Okay. A5. Kunal is not very convinced. Yeah, he wants to attack, but uh, he is like, okay, today pawn structure. Uh, <laughs> A5. Okay, Raj. A5. Shubham. Okay. Sir, Raj. Rook AC8. Rook AC8. Rook AC8. Okay. Uh, Bhavik. Oh, see, I am thinking of Rook AC8. Rook AC8. Karthik. I was thinking of rook a c eight, but then I'm trying to calculate king d three. King d three, okay. Uh, Nirne. So I think this one is pretty straightforward. I would play rook a five, uh, because a5. we have a backward pawn. He is going rook a one, rook a four to pawn attack a5. that backward pawn. pawn. So okay. we should just uh push the pawn, and I think it is important to not play a six because while it doesn't look same uh, on a six, there is rook a one, and then b a six is coming. So I think a five should be the move. No, but, but after a six, rook a one, he can play a five. So, so you say? A6, Rook A1, A5, you can play. Yes, sir, that's also Right, common. right. So, in fact, that could be a better version for yes, you yes, because sir. you have a passed pawn and his pawn on C4 is backward, right? Yes, sir. That would be the ideal situation. Mm -hmm. All right. So, the correct move is, in fact, A5. Uh, Rook C8 is a possibility. It is a possibility surely to consider. But the problem here is that it is being refuted tactically, okay? So, Rook C8, he will still continue with Rook A1. He won't uh, defend a pawn on C4. After rook a1, let's say if you try to play rook into c4, that turns out to be a mistake because after takes, takes, takes on a7, you can't take bishop b5, okay, because of rook a check. So you have to play rook e8, white plays rook b7, hitting the pawn on b6. If you play rook b4, you think that you will eliminate the b5 one, but he has this intermediate one, knight c3. And uh, you still can't take bishop b5. He is ready to take with rook into b6. And white is clearly better. So you'll have to deal with this past b pawn, right? It's going to be a head attack in the endgame. So that's why. Uh, so what you have to do after rook a1, in fact, is to play rook 5, c7. Uh, okay. So can you move yeah. that? Uh, yeah. So rook a1, rook 5, c7. He'll play something like king d3 now. Uh, so he's defending the pawn on c4 and your pawn on a7 is still weak. It is not that, it is not something like, you know, that black is clearly minus or something. White is just slightly better. But it's a headache, right? The a7 pawn, you'll have to keep on defending it for so many moves. So that's why when you have the opportunity, you have to eliminate it quickly. So either a6 or either a5, both of the moves are correct moves. So what after rook b7 and rook 8 c7, so how exactly is white going to make like, progress? Yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, see, the main thing is that you will have to keep on defending and white will try to maneuver the knight here and there. It's That's why I'm saying it's just slightly better, but practically it is a bit uh, uncomfortable to defend like this. No, and yeah. if you just eliminate the pawn straight away, then there's simply no uh, no problem, right? You can just defend comfortably in this end game. Yes, sir. Right. Mm. So if you just compare, a5 is uh, a bit more comfortable to play. And anyways, you, you played rook ca to eliminate that c4 pawn, correct? That was your main intention. When you can't eliminate that, and you are suddenly forced to defend the a7 pawn, it is not such a good idea, right? So e5 is the correct move, ps 6 rook a6, and black is at the least equal, because we have a weak pawn on b6, he has a weak pawn on c4. So it kind of uh, compensates, and this is an equal position. All right, so this was the last exercise. Did you guys enjoy the session? Hmm. Do you guys learn something from it? Yes. Yes. Sir. Great. 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 Uh, what did you guys learn today? Anyone can like can say something, and you can just maybe anyone. Uh, just one point. You don't need to say many. One one point from 
what i learned is uh, mainly the game actually revolves around the pawn structures uh, so which we don't recognize at times okay right so, so i think oh, yeah go on who wanted to say bhavik yeah bhavik so so many about the six pawn structures and how you can so like you know uh, force your way into like getting a you know, better position through pawn breaks and also uh, like fixing the pawns and uh, so basically how like important positional play really is and uh, so like mainly the pawn structures and their importance and not to get distracted by sagar that you should learn <laughs> actually in the end bhavik you are all the time trying to attack instead of improving your pawn structure <laughs> Yes. Right. Nirmay. Nirmay. Not a. So I think this uh, thing that I specifically learned was the uh, three ways, the three specific ways to target the opponent's pawn structure because we know there are uh, we have to target opponent's pawn structure and the ways, but uh, just you just clarified it a lot by just uh, telling the three ways. Yes, so for me, it was protecting and uh, just how to protect in a safer and uh, secure way with the uh, counterplay. It was a main thing for me to. Uh, Uh, learn here. Very nice, very nice. So I'm sure everyone learned uh, something from the session, and this is something you know that will help, hopefully help you for a long time to come, not just for the upcoming tournaments. So always keep these things in mind. And uh, one of the main aims of the session was also like when you observe any game, when you study any game, uh, whenever you practice, try to observe the pawn structure, how they keep on changing, whether there is a pawn weakness right from the opening, uh, how one side exploits that pawn weakness. or whether someone accepted a pawn weakness right early on, early on in the opening but then they eliminated at the first opportunity right so try to observe the pawn structures like this because in most of the openings you will find imbalanced pawn structures one side will accept a pawn structure voluntarily for double bishops or something and then they will play uh, accordingly right so keep an eye on this whenever you study any classical game or any good game tremendous and also guys uh, think about it all of this is not given in any book or anything this is something that swapnil has developed on his own so all these points which he has mentioned if you have written down great or else please do go through the stream again whenever you get time maybe tonight maybe tomorrow and note them down and try to think about them so that when you play a game you can apply them in your game and also you will be in touch with swapnil for another week or so so please do ask him about how you should improve and uh, so that when your games come up you can do well uh, so a big thank you to swapnil for doing this and swapnil thank you so much it was amazing team chess patshala uh, is a, is fantastic all of you were so so involved so thank you all for being a part of this Thank you so much, Sagar. It was a pleasure to have this session, and uh, yeah, I also enjoyed interacting with uh, all the players, all the members of Team Chase Part Seven. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Thank you so Thank you. much, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Good night. Bye, sir. Thank you. Bye. Okay, guys, that was Team Chess Part Seven today. The third session, the third episode of. India's got chess talent got over today and what a wonderful episode this was the the knowledge that Swapnil gave us through the examples was truly wonderful uh, and i think um, all the eight players are very lucky here in fact all the 32 of them are very lucky to uh, be training under them and not just today this was of course on stream but they can uh, they ask Swapnil questions and they can keep on working with more focus throughout this week and all of them have tournaments coming up so maybe they can do well and then the semi finals finals will be coming up later this month so that is where we will also have some interesting games to look forward to uh, i hope that everyone in the chat also learned uh, a few things so thank you all in the chat as well for uh, attending this and see you all tomorrow tomorrow we will have grandmaster swayams mishra with his team delphinus joining us and i'll see you all at 7 pm tomorrow until then guys take care bye bye